Hey, how you doing? Tony Wisinski, official air reader of the podcast, back for bear season. Here he is, Frankie Bergasetti. He's got, what? what is this? You got the schedule filled out? Is this a highlighter? Is it a crayon? I got the schedule, Tony. It's great to be back. Yeah, you 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 look fantastic. The offseason's been good to you, I can tell. I notice, is the back a little tender, though? Were you carrying some heavy boxes last Back's night? Back's fine. I'll be fine to bring my nice uh, case of Miller Lite into the parking lot for the opening day on Sunday. Mm. I love the way you carry it, too, because they have the handle on the case, but you you carry it like a football. You say, if I'm going to a football game, I got to protect the bread. Yeah, let me tell you how disgusted I am by these kids nowadays that need wheels on their cooler. Disgusting. I got a nephew, Dave. He's always wheeling it around. We call him Davey Wheels. Shows up to the graduation parties. He's like, hey, I, uh, last time I was here, I drank all the beer in the garage. I brought some more Miller Lite for the boys. It's disgusting. Davy wheels. wheels. I'm excited. Bear season's officially back. We'll be in the parking lot this Sunday to watch them play against the 49ers. And you know we're going to be drinking some uh, 96 calorie, 3.2 carb per 12 ounce Miller Lite. Mm, absolutely. Miller Lite is for those who actually want to taste their beer. As a, as a unique thing to think about, they want to taste their beer. That's why we drink Miller Lite. So next time you're getting ready to enjoy some cold ones with the crew, Go to MillerLite.com forward slash redline to find delivery options near you. Or you can pick up Miller Lite pretty much anywhere that they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Hey, you do. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Chicago sports fans. This is Barstool Carl. White Sox, Dave. Chief. Howdy. And this is Redline Radio and All Gas No Break Chicago Sports Podcast brought to you by Barstool Sports Chicago and, of course, our good friends at Miller Lite. I'll say off the top, Big Cat will be joining us in a little bit in the show to do a full Bears schedule breakdown. It's become probably my favorite segment that we do annually. A and tradition we, unlike any other. Our best tradition, I would say. And as we get into Maybe Bears our only one. season. Yeah, I mean, probably. <laughs> uh, really, all uh, but as we get into Bears season, I know I, I think it's important that we recognize off the top a lot of people in Chicago are, are approaching the next – 18 weeks with with a level of uh, certainty that the Bears are not going to be any good. And I wa- I'm bringing this up because if you took the same people in Chicago and you said, how do oh, you think the Bears are going to be good? They're going to say, absolutely not. But if you took the same people and you said, would White Sox Dave throw a strike for the first pitch? They'd say, absolutely yes. More, absolutely not. More certainty that White Sox Dave's arm would deliver a beautiful 86-mile-an-hour, well-located four-seam fastball. What's more likely? I think if Dave overthrows G. Lito, then the Bears can absolutely win 11 games. Seriously, and it's my fault they're going to be bums this year. They're not going to be bums. I think they'll be fine. They won't beat themselves, maybe. It has a quick transition away from your yeah. No, I'll I know. I'm, talking about it. Deflecting. I'm, 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 not, I'm not deflecting. We'll this guy's get there. blocking fucking extra there, points like, for Florida State. There's, yeah. there's nothing I haven't already said about it. Like Not on this show. Not on this show, for sure. Um, on social media, on the Portnoy show, and all that. So, I knew I had been, I was going to be throwing out the first pitch. What, like two weeks, probably something like that. And um, thirty years ago, <clears throat> it was well Miller Lite and and the Sox. It was I've known for about two weeks, and so immediately I hit up Giolito and was like, "Hey, who catches the first pitch?" He's like, "Usually the mascot." And I was like, "Okay, good." So, well, back up. I did request Tony La Russa to catch it, and they immediately <laughs> said, fuck no. Um, and then he, you know, had to go get his pacemaker replaced. So that was a big fuck no. But, get well soon. Uh, and get well soon, Tony. But um, he said the mascot. So I'm like, oh, perfect. He's going to be wearing, like, one of those giant, like, fake gloves that are, like, you know, clown gloves. I'm just going to rear back and throw it through Southpaw. And then Gio's like, no, 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 I'll catch it, I'll catch it. I'm like, no, I want the mascot. And I'll like show you the messages. Like I, I was arguing with him about throwing a baseball to either him or the mascot. He ended up winning. I'm like, fine, you can catch it. But I, just so you know, if I like skip it and you like get a shin burger and can't pitch, then it's your fault. And he's like, I'll, that's, that's fine. So it's all good. Uh, I told him like the whole plan the entire time was to throw it as hard as I could. And he was in on it too. And the camera guy, a camera guy who I've never got this guy's name. I don't think I've ever said a word to him. He usually wears the old school Barstool Chicago flag shirt. That's like eight years old or nine years old. You guys, that gray one, you guys know, I know what I'm the talking shirt. about. Yeah. Never said a word to this guy in my life, but I see him at the stadium all the time because he's recording like little kids do the chicken dance for the jumbo yeah, yeah, and yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. So that guy, I told him, I'm like, make sure you're you're not directly behind Geo. Like get off to the right or left or whatever. 
And then I told the people, um, the lady, I forget her name, real nice lady that brought me onto the field. She works for the White Sox. She, I'm like, hey, can you just make sure there's nobody like directly behind home plate along the backstop? She's absolutely. I get up there. The guy with the camera is lined up with the camera like he's the umpire. And then there's a bunch of little kids uh, lined up, um, probably about 12 or 15 little kids. Uh, I think they were with like their parents or something doing some parade before the game or some shit uh, lined up along the backstop. So I was thinking like, ah, if if I let one go and it hurts one of these kids, I'll look like a fucking dick. But it'd be kind of funny. But at the same time, I don't want to hurt anybody. Blah, 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 blah. So like I, as I'm winding up on the mound, I'm like, fuck, I can't do it. And I just I lobbed it. And I mean, but you were on the mound for like half a second I, that's, before the ball. That left entire your thought oh, process, that entire thought process went down for in that split second. Did you ever think about waving people off? Be like, get the fuck out of here. No, no, no. So I think that would have been like a very White Sox Dave move to be like, hey, that, I'm throwing here. Everyone else, get out of the way. Perhaps, yeah. Get your small children out of here. What, um, did, you, what did you think when you saw it? I honestly did you even go into the stadium? No, I didn't. Yeah, of course uh, not. Well, I went to this tailgate. I was there as a you know Miller Lite obligation. It was actually a fucking awesome tailgate. Yeah, yeah it was. It was sure. great yeah. food. Like a million options of beer, which we only need Miller Lite, but good options. Good to have options. Mm-hmm. RV sick, college football, top roof deck RD, whatever. It was awesome. I want to, but I want to watch college football. It was Notre Fair. Dame, Ohio State, like. And then it was funny. I was flipping over to the no hitter. I was like, "Well, I hope I didn't miss a no hitter." Yeah, <laughs> I I looked. Who it's was like I talking to? Two thirds, right? I locked yeah. it up. Yeah. Looked eight to the thirds. person sitting next to me, and I'm like, "Arise is gonna. He's a little slap hitting bitch. He's gonna have a. He's gonna slap one up the middle right here." With, but when he was up. But anyway, so I uh, I have mixed opinions on it. To be honest with you, I obviously like Dave talks so much about his arm, but he always says he's he's power, not accuracy. But I mean, you, you know, you didn't you didn't gas it up, which is very surprising. But like it, that it, was the plan. It was the plan the entire week. I was wondering if your previous first pitch experience at the dogs game was that rattling was a, around no, the no, back no, no, of your no. head. That, that you was were a, so wild. That was way fucking worse. That kid could have caught the ball easily, but like that one, I kind of threw on a line. This one, I just lobbed up there. But I'm conflicted because the amount of people that were shitting on it on Twitter, like. I mean, there's no way all those people could throw a ball. Like, there's no, no I, fucking way. No, look, I you know what I mean. I was laughing like, with no every way. last person that was shitting on me for that pitch. And William Williams hasn't. I don't think like that. He's like two or three weeks behind the internet. Usually, it'll get to him through one of the younger kids he works with. Um, so I don't think he's seen it yet. Because I you haven't send heard it to him, him right now and get a live reaction. Text message? Oh, no, because I don't want that reaction. I'm not looking forward to that reaction. <laughs> I, um, I got a I got a text from Kish, his uh, baseball oh, yeah. coach, being like, "I'm so disgusted with Dave." <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. He was he was laying into me. Um, everybody was, but I was laughing at it. I Do mean, you agree though? You like all the people that are, think they're gonna walk up there and throw a fucking George Bush right down the fucking pipe? That's that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's See, harder than people I was. Think. In, I just want to get had, back. Dave went to the mound. Dave made it harder for himself. Oh, you have to go to the no you, surprise. I think no. the the wrestlers. You would throw it from the front. That you a little. Bit a lot of front. a lot of people throw it from the fringe. I know, but, but you know, uh, you're not a lot of people. You gotta have one foot on like the front part of the dirt. But like, if you're in the landing zone for these guys, I mean, g- good thing Dylan sees one out there and pitched as well as he did. I mean, I was he wearing the story line, flats. Dave, it's as like simple as this. Though you're on the mound, man. That's his mound. I jumped over the the chalk though. I made sure people saw that. Um, you know how much this guy loves a mound, dude. We went to fucking eight fields to fucking find a mound. The but but it's, he loves the White Sox, so it's like, dude, you're, it's a must-win game yeah, on the yeah, mound. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. really like playing. It's just a risky proposition. That's yeah. what I thought. I thought, man, I he's going out there in a must-win game. He's taking Dylan Cease's mound. That, that was my number one yeah, reaction. Yeah. The throw's a throw. When you're pumped up, and this is Dave's mechanics, he he does let his front shoulder fly a little bit. He's susceptible when he misses. I get a little when leaky he, for when sure. Dave misses, Dave is absolutely going to miss up and away. Dave does not miss yep. down and away. Yeah, never I, actually. I, I, no, never, you'll never, never miss down and away. Sorry. No, I, and I, and I and looking back, the only regret I have is that, and you guys are going, you and you will probably laugh at this. If I would have thrown it as hard as I could, it would have been. I wouldn't have thrown a strike because I would have been aiming high just to overcompensate for not bouncing it. So I would have probably thrown it in his face. And Gio's like, he's a fucking monster of a human. So, yep. um, but I 
I would have hit him pretty much in the chest as if he were standing. Like he would have had to get up and catch ball because he would he was cr- crouching down. But I would have thrown it right to his face. Yeah, I believe that because that's how you, like that's the way you normally throw. That's how I normally throw, right? And the like it was in that like I was gonna do it, gonna do it, gonna do it. Ah, I gotta lob it, and then Fuck. I lobbed it. Yeah, I know. But you know that, what? How about this? I, I you could have won me. You could have won me. Like I, I would have said this would this was the greatest first pitch move of all time if you did this. If Dave threw the pitch, stayed on the mound, and fucking called the ball back. Was shaking him up. No, <laughs> we're running someone, this fucking thing. Someone told me to pull the care. Trevor Bauer and just launch it over the center field fence. What from there? That'd be three forty. That would be a it, great way to tarnish no. our best relationship. In <laughs> yeah, the like the one team that actually very much loves us. But were you solo? everybody? Everybody was asking if I was nervous. I'm like, no, I'm not fucking nervous. Why would I be nervous? I'm throwing one baseball sixty feet. Because like you know the reaction it, is going to get published uh, yeah. and talked about. No, I, I, I wasn't. And you know nervous. where you're throwing. It's not like you're stepping out to like some place in Lincoln Park. But everybody asking me if I was nervous like made me think, man, I should probably be nervous. But I wasn't. I wasn't really nervous like at all. It was like it was just. Uh, I think I started it, thinking too much a little bit. I think at this stage of our life doing anything athletically with eyes on. I don't care if it's like a tee shot. You know, if you played in a golf tournament and you got like 30 people behind you in the tee box and you know they're all watching, waiting, like it gives it a little extra gas, a little extra nerves. I mean, I, I don't want to say there was zero, zero nerves. It was just like I was not I would I would have been, I would have been nervous. Were you sure. the only one? No, it was a wrestler who was like, everybody's making fun of me for being short. You know wrestling. He's an AEW guy. He's been on with Walker. What's his name? MJF? No, 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 no. no. I know who CM that guy Punk? is. He was legitimately four inches shorter than me. Ooh. Brian Danielson? I would know his name as soon as I heard it. But, um, but yeah, like, if I would have pumped a strike at 45 miles an hour, no one would have said a word. No one would have said true. a word. And So you're saying it was better? That you did through like that? Yeah, better to look like a jackass. I sure. know I know Gio's your guy, but do you wish that you had called on somebody who was like six I, foot? I asked for Tony La Russa. Well, and I was going to ask for Larry Garcia too, but they said you don't get to pick. But I backdoored it with Gio. Yeah, okay. So. Um, probably the biggest catch radius you could have, though, on the White Sox. Oh, 100. Probably yeah. one of them in baseball. How many guys are taller than Gio in baseball? He's what, 6'6", six, six, right? Oh, no, no, taller than that. Six, hurt, seven, hurt no bleak six, reaching eight. up you there. Sit, mm. You sit next to him. How tall do you think he is? He's tall. 6'7", six, 6'8", six, I'd tall. say. He's a, he's huge. Was it, uh, was it uh, on a real note, was it like a cool moment for you? Nah. Whatever. No? Nah. Oh I God. pitched on that mountain in high school. Such a fucking hard out, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it really so was the first and pitch for your favorite team. You're, I'm not, you, were, you weren't nervous. Yeah, and there's nothing it wasn't that big of a deal. That team. I uh, I mean, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to lie and say it's the best moment of my life? Like I wasn't even thinking about. Well, what's it, better, really? I if honestly, I would have rather spent the extra twenty five minutes in the parking lot, drinking Miller Lite That's and eating all I the think. free food. I was the last guy there. Yeah, I would have been rather been in the parking lot. I mean, it's it's cool. But the other thing, I didn't get introduced as Barstool Sports because I was looking for the Twitter meltdown. I had to put a couple people in their place <laughs> I afterwards, saw that. but you're I did br- see you're that. A, you have a sick brain. Um, but he, he like loves that. Yeah, Gio, but Gio's like, listed at 6'6", 245 on baseball reference, just for the record. I would say he's way more than 245. Shout out, all right, then shout out to the White Sox for letting yeah, him do that. that was That's great. Cool. And Miller Lite. Yeah, yeah and, and Miller, Miller Lite. Lite. That's honestly sick. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was. Do you want to say fine. thank you to the audience for putting you in that position? So Thank some you to the OG audience. day one red line radio folks are, that have seen the rise of <laughs> ten White Sox days years sitting on a couch in Scottsdale, Arizona, talking into a fucking solo cup. I love That's how mad truth. love how mad Tom was that he <laughs> just diminished his. I mean, it, but then people people get aside of Tom. Of Tom's a passionate makes sports no sense fan. about this. All of a sudden, White Sox Dave so cognizant about a camera guy for the first time in his life. <laughs> Camera guy I mean, was not. Well, where he the, he wasn't. Hurt him. He wasn't where the umpire is. By the way, I watched the video. <laughs> yes, he was directly behind him. He wasn't. He yes, was he, in, was. he was on the grass, so it's not directly behind him. Okay, from my per, like from my angle, he's directly behind him. Ooh, Lance agrees. Yep. Lance is a great arbiter, third party arbiter. Lance is up there. Yeah, he's, he's, agreeing, he's agreeing with what I'm saying. I just yeah. I had him. I had him. I'm watching the video once Dave said that right now. Okay, how how him. how many feet behind him? I mean, it doesn't matter because he was wherever the grass is. It was a straight line. 
You don't have depth perception? I mean, I was. Well, but I think I'm. If he's directly behind him, I don't think it matters. Like if he's in line and yeah. he throws it hard, it's going to drill the camera guy, regardless if he's on the grass or not. I don't. I don't well, I think, think that's. So. Uh, I think that's great for you, Dave. I, in my estimation, that's pretty much all you care about is the White Sox. I, I think it'll probably happen again down the road eventually at some time, yeah. and I promise I will. I will burn a heater. And on that note, very quickly, did we all get duped about a fourth season of Eastbound and Down? I, I, it's the first I'm hearing about it. On um, what note? <laughs> yeah. Well, burning, burning heaters. That's, I mean, that's that's oh, what okay. he says in the show, burning heaters. Because oh. Glennie blogged it. I blogged it first, but they published his, which is fine. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. And, say it's not fine. No, it's fine. I don't give a shit. Oh, okay. Um, Who do you blame for stuff like that? Oh, wow. Who's that's blame anybody? You're very yeah, stupid. so I think we got, it's a big hoax. Yeah, I thought it was real, too. It says, Everybody thought it was real, and then someone's like, this is actually fake. I'm like, Fuck, man. We should just It'd make be it. bad timing for yeah. HBO. I mean, they're, they're killing it right now with the dragons. Yeah, that and... Just killing the dragons. There the the Lord no... of the Rings thing came out. Nobody has said a word about that show. They yeah. spent they spent billions on that fucking intellectual property. Be- Bezos Here is, come the dragons. Yeah. Bezos is uh, blocking negative comments about it, too. Okay, good for yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. He's also yep. kidding. Uh, no, he's not. And mm-hmm. if there were four seasons of Eastbound and Down, I'm sure it'd be completely fucking atrocious. Oh, uh, well, yep. you guys, I should say thanks to everybody who went out to the White Sox game. I know getting tickets were hard, uh, uh, but if you did get tickets through Game Time, the exclusive ticketing partner yes. of Barstool Sports, I mean, guys, home run to you, really, because you used uh, the app that guarantees lowest prices. It's a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. <laughs> Football is officially back. You guys should be scouring this one for the rem- could be one of the last last goals at Soldier Field. Uh, how first, was, I mean, how was the Lumineers? You use it for Lumineers? Yeah, I, I did use it for the Lumineers. This is an amazing experience, and I, and I did fuck up. I called Danny. I was in the garage on my way to the White Sox, going like, "Where are we parking in the tailgate?" He's like, "Dude, we don't have to get there till four o'clock." And I was like, "You gotta be kidding me!" I like got dinner. The whole thing. You guys know Mrs. Carl and I like uh, to talk about her every now and then, but like. That's the one. That's my favorite. That's my absolute favorite person in the world. I never, ve- I'm very rarely am in these positions where I'm like, babe, I can't do, I have to do this. And I've been, of course, Lumineers for months. We're going to the Lumineers concert. For your birthday, you got it. We're going in the pit. I'm calling Barstool. Can we use game time? Here's your pit tickets. Uh, I've been talking about it for like a month and a half on starting nine. I felt very bad. So I should use this opportunity to apologize. It was their birthday. Um, but thank you for that. There's like one part of me where I'm like, I know that the, like, if I was like, I'm not going to the game because fuck you guys, like, in my heart, I'm like, this sucks. But I, you guys know I'm Dude, coming from hey, a spot where it's fucking like. fucking Lumineers at Wrigley. Got to go. You got to do yeah, it. And yeah. I got the tickets from game time and the tickets were, I, I was so, code did dude, you use? I, I used the promo sh- code uh, uh, RLR for $20 off my first order. However, this weekend, we will be going to the Bears Niners game and we should use promo code football. Oh, what's yes. that promo code, Ed? It's just football. Okay, wow. So, yeah, so uh, the purchase process is so quick and easy, and once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. No prints are needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get to the game seamlessly. Uh, download the Game Time app, go to the account tab to create a login, and redeem code FOOTBALL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Download Game Time, last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Come out. We'll be out there. We'll be bopping around. Yeah. Football. 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 Come to the game. Come hang out. Are you guys going to try to leave early on Sunday? Uh, I was just going to ask if you were going to bring a backpack in. Uh, no, I <laughs> so won't. Last time we went to it, so the background story for new listeners, the first time the four of us got together for a Bears game as like Barstool delegates, we went to a Bears It was like August 2018, game. yeah. Yep. We had like just got, ago. it was like we went out one week, we signed the contract with Barstool, like, all right, we're gonna, you guys are going to host a podcast now on, your, on the site. It was like a week after Pat McAfee quit. <laughs> yeah hey, here come um, these guys where's yeah. replacement yeah uh that was funny yeah i still have that football from the chiefs that's yeah, nice. that was great yeah. do we know where we're sitting let's talk for a second about best places to sit in soldier field i've sat all over the stadium well you never want to sit in end zone no ever 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 yeah i'd rather be i, I mean, honestly don't care how high up i am at soldier because it's such a small stadium with respects to the rest of the nfl and I haven't been to many NFL stadiums. I've only been to Lucas Oil, I want to say, and, and Indy. But United if, Club's the best, though. I think so. Yeah, yeah I like the amazing. elements. That's the only, only they do have the elements, only time. Say. And the, is that not a suite? Mm-mm. Oh, never mm-hmm. mind then. I just assumed proven it, was it has like the yeah major the glass glass yeah. But I don't care. I'd rather be five uh, hundreds or three hundred, whatever the 
upper deck is and midfield than lower level and on an, in an end zone. A hundred percent. I don't mind high up in the end zone. Actually, it's like coaches camp. It's like you're watching the all twenty two. My buddy, I went. I used his tickets last year. We went together, and he was on the waiting list. I want to say since he was eighteen, since high school, and he's high up in the in the end zones. Like, and he's got to wait decades to get better seats. Yeah. It sucks. Well, get speaking of all twenty two, we'll talk Bears with Big Cat in a minute. Um, should we talk about the Notre Dame all twenty two, the Illinois all twenty two? Yeah. Uh, what do we think? Well, that's why I wasn't there. I was out in Hoboken for the mm-hmm. for the stream. And it's like, I feel like the internet just has like collective amnesia. And they just like, you know, Notre Dame, everybody in my mentions, everybody on the internet, Notre Dame is going to give up 50. They're going to lose by 100. Like they can't keep up with Ohio State, greatest offense. They got three Heisman finalists, whatever they, all the projections are. And that was a fight all the way until deep into the fourth quarter. It's a four point game until they had that last like kind of dagger touchdown. But if Ohio State is. You know the second best team in the country Notre Dame is right there with them like they're freshman quarterback essentially first start in Columbus they had a walk-on playing wide receiver and he made the one big play that they had and it was you know they had a good game plan and it's like they came down to I Ohio State deserved to win I think they're the better team they much more physical than they were last year uh but that, that shocked me me too and it was just like they you know, they made a big deal out of uh, Knowles coming over from Oklahoma State, and he's a guy that just kind of lets guys play, and he's never had athletes before because he's been at of Oklahoma State, and now he's got four- and five-star guys, and it shows. Like I mean, they, they dropped three spots. Yeah, they dropped to eight. Yeah. yeah. But, it, like, it's but everybody, you know, was like, oh, like Notre Dame, like, they're overrated. They suck. It's like how many teams in the country would go into Ohio State and basically we're in a one-score game for, what was it, 50 minutes like i think that i think ohio state scored that go ahead that final to put them up 21 10. i think that was and that was a that was a slow death like you knew that was coming it was like four or five yards Mm -hmm. at a time and notre dame just looked tired at the end and but it was like how many teams could go into that spot opening week with you know without their best guard with no wide receivers healthy and a first time starter quarterback and and play that well like I don't think there's many, and the Notre Dame, like I've said many times, like they're, it's Ohio State and Alabama and Georgia, and I think the next group is where Notre Dame is. So they're always going to be on the fringe. I just I, I like now everyone's acting like, like Notre Dame got blown out. Like that that's been like the response. It's like how can you like and talking all sorts of the, shit about the, Notre Dame. Fuck the straw man. Like, dude, they dropped three spots realistically, they lost by eleven. They're, yeah. they're in a prime position to be alive at the end. Like, yeah, they, they go out and play well, like who the fuck is gonna yeah, stop? Right. Okay, okay, here, the right here. Team. Michigan did Especially if good. Ohio State goes and rolls. Yeah. 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 And I yeah, and I think Ohio State I think Ohio State's good and they you know, they had JSN barely played and he's one of their better players on the outside, one of the better receivers in the country. Oh yeah. And he didn't play hardly at all. So like that's a factor, but Notre Dame like they had a good game plan. That that game to me really came down to, I don't know how, third and eleven, when you're up ten seven in the second half, that's when you decided to dial up a double safety blitz, and that was a play that went for the touchdown. It was like what you've been keeping them in front of you. They've been terrible. I think that I think um, they were like one of nine or passes over ten yards at that point in the game. So why are you just all of a sudden going giving away from them the whole field? Yeah, and then yeah. that so then they give it the touchdown. Now they're down 14-10, and then they were kind of having a they're over midfield, and the offensive pi and that like that killed that drive, and that was the last real shot that they had in that game. So, but if like you take those two plays away, it's probably a one score game. And that, so I don't know. It just it was like I it maybe it is a straw man, but then there's a lot of straw men in my mentions. Like a lot of people banging their chest, thumping their chest about Ohio State, yeah, like how great they are. Well, then what is no? If they're the best team in the world, I don't know what Notre Dame is, but they're not far off. And I think they'll get better. I agree with you. Yeah, I think they're. I think Notre Dame's a program. Like they're they're right there. And I do think you know the Clemson at home will be tough, and we'll see what USC is at the end of the year. I'm not totally sold on like a collection of transfers being great, but they're they're going to be. They'll be in the mix for the playoff. I think come. I think they'll beat Clemson. That Clemson offense, at least in the first half against Georgia Tech, they looked bad. They took off though. Bad. I know, but yeah. it's also Georgia Tech. Yeah. You know, like, and they were gifted the ball at like the fifty. But it's times. so early too. That's why I thought. I thought NB plus seventeen was the easiest bet. At, like. Oh, you're on Notre I was, Dame. Yeah, I was yeah. So was I. Yeah. 
And I and I, I think the offense will get better. They'll get guys healthier, and they'll be ready to go. Yeah. So I'm not too concerned about it. Yeah. I I saw Ohio State fans that were disappointed. I loved Big Ev's take on this. We've gotten to know each other a little bit more just yep. through doing the hot ice like gambling show. And he was saying that uh, he was like, it's just crazy that there are people shitting on Ohio State for not being good enough to like blow them out. And there's people that are shitting on Notre Dame because they look this and that. He's like, is there anybody out there who's just willing to say it's week one and two good football programs squared off against each other? Is it just possible yeah. that it was just like a good football the more game? I we'll look at it. Yeah. The higher rank. He's sharp, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's very He's the best sharp. gambler at this company by far. Like well, he, he was on Ohio State big. Like He liked he liked Ohio State. I mean, he, he's he, not he like, win wouldn't them all. put it in. And he's but, also from Ohio State. I know, State. but it's just like, and but he was he was easy to do the stream with. Like a, he was he was not like your obnoxious Ohio State fan. So mm-hmm. he was good, but it was, you know, they're right there. They're right there. Uh, sp- speaking of uh, great gamblers at the company, we're about to be joined by one of the best gamblers I've ever met in my entire life, a guy who knows how to get hot, especially around March Madness time. But before we do get to this very special guest, let's let's thank our sponsors at Revitalite. They keep us hydrated uh, through their advanced solutions that are designed to replenish vital fluids and minerals. Dave, I know every day you come in here Mondays, that weekend, a lot of fluids leave your body over the weekend. That is true. That is true. Um, I mean, my favorite part about Revitalite is that it's 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 just so simple to consume and, and, and complement your weekends with. So my method is I like to drink half before I go out on a Friday or Saturday night and then half in the morning when Genius. I wake up and do my walk of shame. Genius, so Dave. I, I commend um, Revitalite for, you know, Bring that into my life mm-hmm. and you like that barry flock frost the black label yeah he's a big black label I guy am. and uh and that's a good reminder to our guys that you can pick up black label you can pick up revitalite uh today in store or online at the barstool store and tweet at us or tag at drink revitalite in your morning after stories those are always good when we get those i like yeah. after yep. morning stories keep and sending them to us th- thank you revitalite uh at drink revitalite let's get to a little something for the college kids tailgate season you're going to be out early in the morning yep. you want to have this side by side with whatever else you're drinking the rest of the way if you're on a tailgate make sure you have revitalite well i'm actually big cat can you hear us yes well i'm okay. actually yeah. i'm actually interested in your take what did you what was your perspective on notre dame ohio state I thought that uh, I was actually very impressed with Ohio State. I thought it was like the the way I described it was last year, the way Ohio State lost to Michigan, they basically just had no grit. They had no way of winning a game that wasn't a track meet. They went and played Notre Dame. Notre Dame kind of played to not get blown out. Their quarterback, you know, impossible place to start your career on the road at the fucking shoe. Yep. But uh, I was like, I walked away being like, Ohio State just proved that they can win a tough game and it doesn't it's not going to be just seven on seven you know running up and down the field and notre dame is kind of what i expected they're going to be better than most teams but there's still that gap that they always will have without an elite quarterback to get them to that like i think Buckner ohio state georgia alabama level yeah were you were you on notre dame i, I listened to i pick. wasn't i was on the over so okay. that sucked yeah um but yeah. yeah i like i didn't walk away some people were like, oh, yeah, Ohio State was disappointing. I thought it was completely the opposite. I was like, they just showed that they can play a defensive game where they just have to body blow, body blow, body blow, run the ball, and come out with a win. And, I mean, Jackson Smith, Najigba, I can never say his it's name a tough correctly, name. getting hurt, like, that obviously cha- – he's one of the best receivers in the in the uh, college football. So, that clearly changed it. I Yeah, I walked away thinking both teams are exactly where I thought they would – Ohio State's competing for a national championship. Notre Dame is competing for somewhere in that like next tier. Yeah, but that that kind of flies in the face of their win total being eight and a half. Like if they're if they're the anywhere from five to eight at the end of the year, like they'll be above. Eight. Like that's it falls apart where it's like they're everyone's calling a lot of people calling for a blowout. Seventeen points is a huge line, and it's like when people think they have a very good chance of going eight and four, and I just I just think that's just not indicative well, of where they are so i i can kind of understand like even if, if they win nine games they have to play against clemson which can be a tough game they have to go to at usc so mm-hmm. if they go nine and three i still think they'd be a top 15 team because those wouldn't be bad losses yeah but i i think they'll get at least one of those I, yeah and then byu will be a very tough game yeah BYU that'll be tough very in, good, but everything that's, else that's on their in schedule, vegas yeah yeah everything else on their schedule is very winnable yeah and I, and I thought they had a they I thought they had a good showing and like they had a walk on starting at wide receiver 
because they have some injuries there that'll get cleaned up. Like they'll be, that's not the best Notre Dame version of Notre Dame. And I think they'll be better. You know, I, I'm very interested for that BYU game. So I think they got four games between now and then, and then they're in Vegas for that one. And I, I think that'll be the test. And then it's off to the, off the races for the playoff. I'd agree. Are you enjoying the hell out of Brian Kelly? Just looking like a fool. It, I, we were saying that yeah. before. I love not having to defend him anymore. It's like, it's so, he's cause a, it was like, he's we, a, Terrible guy. Terrible. He's such a yeah. douche. And it was like you yeah. you kind of plugged your nose. You know, it was like, well, he got us back to 10 wins a year. So just kind of plug your nose because he's the best coach since Holtz. And now you got Marcus Freeman and it's Freeman era. And you just be like, I love when the media shit on him, too, because he, he would get away with stuff like being a snarky asshole in South Bend. That's not going to be the case in the SEC. No, yeah. no. Um, I had one last thing before we get to Bears. Uh, Dave. I heard what you said about your first pitch, but I still am confused. Why didn't you try? Because there was people behind him, and at the like last split second, I'm like, ah, I'm not going to chuck it. That was all. That's it. He didn't want to decapitate and a five-year-old. I, I regret that decision. I regret <laughs> yeah. that decision. If Steve, presented with out- the chance again, I will fucking burn that heater. I promise to everybody. I will burn I, it. I went the... I threw out the first pitch at Wrigley because we raised money for uh, Rizzo's charity, and it was like me and like 20 kids with cancer, and they were all standing in front of the rubber, and I was like, no, I'm going to the rubber. It was just me and some wrestling dude. I'm blanking on his name. Uh, How was his? Did did anybody see his? No. No. Probably crushed it. Probably. (laughs) He was also a midget. He was like 5'3". So, now you're a heightist. I mean, well, Dan, <laughs> when Dan, I earlier in the show, Dan, earlier in the show, Dave revealed he wasn't like probably the most disappointing thing that was revealed so far in the show. Dave wasn't like nervous and isn't really putting the experience on a pedestal, which is kind of surprising. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's like, I think it's whatever. Oh, come on. That, I, I was telling people, so I, yeah, it's, it's cool and all, but it's not like, holy shit, I can't believe I got to do that. It's not that feeling. There was... I, I, I'll tell you this, Dan. I told yeah. maybe five or seven of my friends in real life um, about it because I, I wanted people to just find out that I was doing it. And um, I told each and every one of them the most excited I would be is to get announced Dave Williams at Barcelona Sports or whatever and to see the Twitter meltdown because I knew it was coming and they didn't say Barcelona Sports and I'm pissed off about that. Of course they didn't. Of course they didn't. I mean, that was like what I was supposed to do um the, the seventh inning yeah, stretch right. for, yeah. for Budweiser and and everyone flipped out and then they they pulled it and it was like all right fine cool and it was just it was it's the dumbest shit ever we actually um, talked about that they everybody said that they might do that for me pull like not let me do it i thought there was a good chance i that. i thought yeah. there was zero chance cuz the white Sox wouldn't let that happen no <laughs> no shot they would have but i was still yeah. pissed i don't know whose call that was yeah that, they love you that they didn't uh they didn't say Barcelona sports yeah. So. yeah, I my my take on it is like I just don't even whenever I'm asked to do stuff like now like that now I just don't even do it because like it's not yeah. I don't want to put the person in a spot where it's like you're going to have backlash and it's not worth it for you. Yeah. Well, what about like, the Cape Cod League? Did they get backlash? <laughs> that was no, that was it was uh yeah, the the Hamptons League where <laughs> I just showed up. They were I was trying to take my nephew to to a game and he and they weren't playing, so I followed him on Twitter to see when their next game was and they DM they're like, "Hey, can you throw out the first pitch? And I was like, yeah, of course I can. <laughs> I took some BP. It was fucking sick. That sick. Yeah, see, that's, that would have been so Frank sick for Kaminsky those college players. Frank like, to take BP sudden, there. I'd rather take uh, BP a thousand times over. I don't care if anybody's watching or not, than, than do the first pitch. What do you, a million I also, times. Dan, what do you think? also, thi- what are you going to say? Oh, what do you think of Dave requesting to throw it to uh, – uh, La Russa. That was his first choice. He wanted to just they told me no, burn a heater at, a, at an old man. That been I, I wouldn't have, that I wouldn't have, have done fun. that. I wouldn't have done that. I would I would have definitely lobbed it. I would not have tried to hurt Tony La Russa in any way. Hmm. But, Sh- um, shout out White Sox fans, by the way, when Tony La Russa went to the hospital and people were like, really? I don't want, I, I hate his guts and he's the worst manager ever, but I don't, I'm not rooting for him to die. Yeah. It's like, oh, that was very nice of you to not root for death. I, so the, the, the first pitch for the, I can't remember their name, Sag Harbor Whalers. Um, the meanest thing I've I've done, I felt actually kind of bad about it after. I was talking to the team before, and they're like, yeah, this leadoff hitter on the other team is a playoffs championship. And they're like, this leadoff hitter is like a TikTok star, and he thinks he's hot shit. 
and uh, can you like talk shit to him? He got up to at bat the first time. I was standing right behind him, and I just go, "Hey, no matter what you do, Barstool's never gonna fucking hire you." <laughs> and then like, boom, first pitch. <laughs> like it was the meanest thing. <laughs> That's tough. Like that. I kind of yeah. feel like that's you... tough, and it's untrue. He's a TikToker. He's got a chance, you know. That's true. That is true. He's got, he probably, he probably will get it. Gaz will probably hire him, and I'll be like, "Oh fuck, this guy." Yeah. Funny if you just show up to a meeting and he's like across the room from you. You're like, yeah. "Shit." Yeah, he's like, "How do you like me now?" Yeah. 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 Um. Well, thanks so much for spending time. I do mean that seriously. This is by far the busiest time of your your year. Like the schedule comes out for the college football show. 10 weeks obviously everything that's going on part of my take hot hot time for you guys what uh is, is there anything in the wings we don't know about yet dan is there any big surprises you want to break right now no big surprises i don't think um i got yeah, one i'm dying I, to know off the record what'd you say i said i got one i'm dying to know off the record wait okay. can we make yeah, it just on the record off, right yeah, now no 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 go off record right now then. i just really want to know the game of the year <laughs> oh when is this airing uh Tomorrow. what time is pick up airing yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I can say it. it's uh, BYU, uh, Baylor over fifty three and a half. Okay. I put a substantial wager okay. on it. I actually like almost didn't do it because it starts at ten fifteen Eastern time. We're going to Iowa, Iowa State, then flying back. And I know that like I basically have signed myself up to not go to bed till like three a.m. But I don't care. I love this game. I fucking love this game. Did so and I do. I gave the speech on Pickham. I know that people will joke because, like, I have had multiple games of the. I think this is my fifth game of the year this year. Um, Week two, but we. Well, I, it was you know last last winter. Yeah, I had yeah. I had I had Utah Rose Bowl, Georgia National Championship, um, Chiefs Bills over, and then Hank tricked me with the Texas Tech Duke. I'm not even counting that, but I put a lot of money on it, more than my normal amount, and I care very much. So it's not like I'm just throwing it out there i just saw it i love it i really really love it i looked at it for a long time last night game of the year okay beautiful yeah nuts on the line nuts on the line that's so, that's a late start for the game of the year too well you got to be so real late, dedicated for that so late it's going to be just me and like a bunch of people who bet, bet on it just on twitter just like try you know willing that thing to over but i'm very excited for it like i couldn't even sleep what's last the number night, again so 53, 53 and a half so we need a 27-27 game. I'm tossing in right now. I th- yeah, yeah, I just think I'm, on, yeah, I'm on it. Last year they played uh, in Baylor, and the final was 38-24. So that would be eight points over. Eight and a half points over. Oh, and, well, and that's I, I think BYU's research. offense is awesome. I think Baylor's offense is awesome. I just think I think both teams are going to score. Score, score, score. This reminds so, me of when I think this was right when we got hired full-time – or not even full time. I think we were just like the independent contractor still. But uh, we we had the radio show, the serious show in the old office, so HQ two. And um, some dude called us. It was like some college kids, like you gotta bet Western Michigan, and we're all like, and like we all just kind of slyly grab our phones, and yeah. it's just dead air for like twenty seconds. I remember you look <laughs> up, you're like, someone talk. We gotta put th-. like we're all just putting it in because we took I'm some in. blind belt bet. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm in. I mean, uh, yeah, I love it. I do. I, it, listen, if someone says something convincingly, like when we were at um, for March Madness, the uh, shout out the kid at, at uh, Barstool River North that gave me not a call, not a March Madness NCAA bet. It was a uh, CBI bet. Yeah. And it, yeah. it, like, that's, that's not even the NIT. <laughs> I was going to take a piss, and he's like, "Yo, CBI, like." <laughs> under in this game it's gonna be it's gonna win by like 20 points and it did and i was just like fuck that like that guy's the man i'll take whatever he, he gives me mm. so that's that's the way in the door um all right that, that guy's not showing up today though we have the the five of us are gonna do like yes. we're the experts we're the experts yes. when it comes to the bear season schedule uh last year if we recall correctly dan i believe you picked the first 13 games correctly <laughs> And then yes. we, we ran the math on it, and like a one dollar bet on the money line would have paid out like you know seven hundred and fifty grand or something. It it was insane. I, we didn't even realize it until like week eleven. Yeah. Uh, I think Chuck told us like, "Hey, did you realize that you did this?" I don't think I'm going to do it again, but who knows? I you know, it's I'm I I don't know where you guys are at right now. I am now like all summer. I was like, "This Bears team's going to suck. This is going to be brutal." 
I've talked myself into them being frisky. And hmm. frisky isn't mm -hmm. bad. It means that they'll cover some games that they shouldn't cover. They might win a big game that they shouldn't win. They won't be good, but they'll be frisky. I'm hoping for frisky. I like step frisky. below dangerous. Uh, so it goes. So either it's, there's like the worst team in the NFL. There's bad teams. There's frisky. Yeah, I think dangerous, then good, then great. So frisky, okay. if I'm right, frisky means that they're taking a step in the right direction because yeah. a frisky it, team. They're winning in spite of a lack of talent. Fr is Fris how I think Frisky is light years ahead of being an embarrassment, which is what they've oh, been for yeah. years. So yes, I yes, would love yes. Frisky. Frisky, frisky means with next feet. year we're having this conversation. We're like, they might be good. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. What, so then we believe in fields. That's all. That's what it comes down to. We, we like fields. I think so. Speaking I, of Frisky, I, also, I think I like them this weekend. I like I'll take oh, the yeah. Bears with the points. Oh, yeah. Seven. Plus seven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think this is, I saw the stat, this is the most home underdogs in a week one since 1978. There's 11 games Whew. that has a home wow. underdog. So, yeah, I like them this week. I The Fields thing, I, I'm i still reluctant just because I just, we don't have a choice. So, yeah, I, I believe in him. Yeah. That's that's not really a glowing endorsement, but I believe in him. Well, it went viral. Uh, Bruce Arians mentioned him in the same breath as, like, Justin Herbert and... Yeah. I don't know if that was legit, but we like Bruce. Hey, we like Bruce Arians. I will always QB like Bruce whisper. Arians. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So should we do it? Let's yeah. Do it. I'm kind of nervous. I feel like the drama's building. I like this is the part. It's like the end of Shawshank Redemption where I'm watching the whole movie and I just know it's coming. And like, uh, it, it's it's always better at the end than I, and I anticipate when they run, they meet each other on the beach. Like I have this level of expectation to go through the calendar. That's how I feel. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so someone keep track. I'm not going to – I don't want to know the record as we go through because I want to, like, honestly figure out where we're going to land. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be like, oh, well, they're never going to be 2-10. and 10. Like, I want to just get to the end and be like, all right, this is what we were. All right, Lance, all right. you got it? I got it. All right. Week one at home against the Niners. That's going to be a loss. On the road in Lambeau. That's going to be a loss, and I forgot. I don't know if you guys had forgotten, but I looked at the schedule a couple days ago. I had forgotten that was Sunday Night Football. Yeah, that's, that's gonna tough. suck so bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's tough. So bad. God damn it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, week three, Lovey comes home to Chicago. Win. That's a win. And that's, that's on a, CBS, yeah. by the way. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Houston. That's a Why, win. They're a home team. Why are they on CBS? Uh, week four, Sunday, October second, Bears travel to New York. Giants. I think that's a loss. Okay. But you wavered because that's a frisky game. That is, that's a game. I, I just don't know if the, the Giants could be. I think both teams are going to be like not good. And yeah, I think it's going to be a loss. Okay. I think the Giants are wearing their throwbacks too. Ooh, that's which tough. Hurts. Yep. Yeah. Disappointing loss. Followed now next Sunday, uh, week five on the road uh, against the Vikings. That's a loss, unfortunately. That is a loss. Then they got to turn around next Thursday on Amazon Prime. That at is home against after the Washington a bye. Commanders. No, that is not after a bye. The bye is the next week. Not after a bye. The, the bye is not It's actually the shortest <laughs> week of the season. Even, even, yeah. season. even <laughs> better. Even better. All right, week, week even six. Better. Mm. Go ahead. I think that's a win. I think we're going to beat the Commanders. Okay. I don't. Carson Wentz sucks. Sucks. Yep. Then 11 days to prepare for Monday night in New England. I think that's going to be a loss. I just feel like that's going to be one of those games where maybe like, even, I don't think the Patriots are going to be that good, but I think it's going to be like maybe a step back for Justin Fields because Belichick does something to him. Where we're mental like, warfare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're like, hey, God damn it, what's happening? At Dallas, Sunday, October thirtieth, yeah. week eight. That's that's a loss. Okay. Week <sighs> week nine at home against Miami, also CBS. I'm going to say that's a win. I'm going to say that's a win. I, like I just that. think, you know, we're now in November. Dolphins uniforms, candy ass, going to Chicago. Maybe there's a little weather. It's also remember, if you guys remember, this is um, the Dolphins coming to the Bears, I believe was the game that Brandon Marshall and Robbie Gold got in a fight afterwards. That was like when the Tressman train fully came off the track. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It was sometime around like week six, seven. Someone want to fact check me like 2014 and they got in a fight in the locker room and it's like, wait, are wide receivers fighting with our kicker? 
And Did, it was just like I think that's right. Didn't disaster. wasn't wasn't that the Cody Parkey he hit the upright a couple times in that game? No, no, that was no that's, that's that's the uh, that's the fucking who's the Osweiler game? That's not the same game. No, that was yeah. the game in Miami when um when Mitch threw, I think he threw an interception that I think he thought that he was. I think he thought the goalpost was a player. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Osweiler started. <laughs> that was, that was that our was first. Bad. Yeah, it was tough. That, that was a really bad one. Hold on, I'm looking up. 2014, October 19, 2014, we lost 27 14 to the Dolphins. And then I'm almost positive that was the game that afterwards Robbie Golden and Brandon Marshall fought in the locker room. It's a great fight. Uh, it might have also been the game that, remember when Kyle Long. It was actually the only time that I thought Kyle Long was like kind of messed up was when he yelled at the fans for booing. Mm. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, I do remember mm -hmm. that. I do remember he that. He was like unacceptable, yeah. unacceptable. And I was like, I love you, Kyle, but like actually it's kind of our right to boo yeah. when you guys suck. Cody Parkey yeah. did miss a field goal in overtime and the Bears lost. And his comment about the kick was, quote, I just didn't kick it straight enough. <laughs> Oh, so, that's facts. Yeah, facts. Yeah, sure. big facts. All right, I'm looking up Robbie Gold and uh yeah, yeah, it was the same. Yeah, it was that day. They were in involved in heated exchange. Lots of yelling coming from Bears locker room. That was literally the day that it was just like, Yep, this is now Tressman has gone from like disaster to clown show. And then the Aaron Cromer shit. Oh, and then the Trustman worst. addressing the team from the back of the room and like crying. I think he cried. That was Cromer who was crying. Yeah, Cromer cried, and Cromer also like threw Jay under the bus. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't him. And then <laughs> yeah. he ended up the next year he punched a kid in on the beach. Yep. Yeah. yeah that was so a good cool. locker room. Now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, mean, I, I wish they had yeah. hard knocks going for that. Team. Oh my god, would that have been incredible? Yeah, uh, like the I mean, whole I'll season. Say, yeah, for that team, like they, I remember vividly being like, "Well, if they're going to be bad, might as well be a complete clown car." And they, they did that. Yep. Yeah. So that and we got John Fox off of that because we're like, hey, we need stability. And that didn't work either. <laughs> <laughs> and no, the pendulum didn't. swung back the other way. It's like, we need yeah, an offensive need minded. Off. Yeah. Let's go <laughs> we'll get just this keep guy. Swinging in. It. Yeah. Oh, yeah we'll find it sometime. Well, we got right, it. So now. I had a Foos. Miami win. Yeah. Yep. Miami win. Yeah. Uh, I'm also like that as a win. That's Sunday, November 6th. Uh, Giller's getting married on November 5th and the bachelor party's in Miami. So that's a nice oh, little combo thing. There. Okay. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Shit. Um, Okay, Sunday, November 13th versus Dan Campbell. If you want to go to Club uh, the 11 in Miami, I went to a bachelor party a few weeks ago. It's It might be the coolest place in the world. We're, I don't understand yeah, it. Wrong. I still... Ed's been it's there. A, yeah. It's a club. You've been there, Ed? Yeah, I went there after Pegasus with Dave. It's a club, and then there's just 180 of the hottest women ever strippers just walking around being like, you want a lap dance? <laughs> we are in a club. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I was surprised when the itinerary came out. Eleven is on it, and the list of guys going down. It's not an eleven crew. It's like a no. Listen, hopefully they had buckets of Miller Lite. It'll be listen, that crew. My crew was not an eleven crew either. It was like fifteen dudes and all like in their late thirties, and we all got there, and everyone was just like, "This place is incredible." So <laughs> it, doesn't, it, it doesn't matter what the crew. Once you get in there, you're like, "This is awesome." Like fire shows and shit. It's wild. Damn. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, they do like. They have like a stripper pole and then they pull the stripper pole away every like 30 minutes and like do like a Cirque du Soleil thing yeah, in the damn. middle. It's Crazy. bananas. And it doesn't, it like doesn't close. Mm -hmm. Like it's, there's a line out the door at like 7 a.m. Yeah. Do they have like good was, ecstasy there? I, d I did not do any ecstasy. Just a question. I ate some mushrooms. I did not do any ecstasy. <laughs> um, they, they also like, I left at like four in the morning and everyone was like, dude, why are you leaving? Like, it's 4 a.m. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Party's what? just about to get started. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. I got to yeah. start. I, I have to start prepping and training now for this night. I feel like that. Yes. Like, I would go me. there for like my wake. Like, not a bachelor party, like a wake. Like, I'll go there <laughs> yeah, and no, then die. Yeah. It, it was, it was incredible. Incredible. Um, yeah. All right. So, where are we at? We're, uh, we're week, week, 10. 10. week 10 at home versus the Lions. I'm going to say that's a win. That's a streak. That's two yep. in a row. That's two in a row. Well, What's the total this season? <laughs> we're lucky because not yet, Dave. We're because uh, yeah. Don't tell me. We're at man. I mean, now we're talking momentum. And if we do get, oh yeah, if we steal a couple in our our extra frisky early in the season, this is a stretch that gets pretty appetizing because because week eleven we're at Atlanta. Yeah, I think that's going to be a loss though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
I just think you win two games, it's going to be tough, you know? And I, I yeah, I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm giving my honest take. I think it's a loss. Mariota, he sucks. Desmond Ritter, Philippe Franks sucks. Philippe, oh God. I hate Felipe Felipe Franks, Franks is literally like the worst college football he, he player. Sucks. I can't time. believe he's getting paid to play football. <laughs> uh, he he last sucks year, so bad. W- when was he? What, what was his last year in college football? I remember it like being like, "Wait, this guy's still here." I'm just betting against him. Wasn't it like a? I think it might have been the first COVID year, right? Yeah, he just was still there, and he went somewhere else, and it was like, we get to keep betting against this guy. I think he was on. I think he was on the. Uh, uh, he was on Arkansas his last year. Oh, you're yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. Florida yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah, they promptly like, fired their coach. Yeah, I yeah, would this is awesome. point out if you're going to say you wonder how he gets on a roster. He is six seven, two forty, runs a four six, and plays quarterback. Yeah, Give, make so, him a yep. tight end. Athlete. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but, but we yeah. are going to lose to Felipe Franks and the Atlanta Falcons. Then we follow that up with probably the most winnable game on the schedule: Barstool Chicago mm-hmm. Bowl. Uh, we yep. might. This is after Thanksgiving, but based on the amount of shit Tom Lay's talked to us about the New York Jets. The Bears are yeah. are at the Meadowlands. Yeah, we're gonna win that game. Dub. We're definitely gonna win that game. Tell Tom to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Tom's here. He's got. He can hear you. It's our second. Oh, I know. Oh, I know he's here. I know he's. Here. <laughs> it's our second game there this year. That year, so we'll be warmed yeah. up for the stadium. That's true. Mm. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. The travel. Then, everybody's set, ready to go. Yep. And everyone's like, "Hey, are you gonna go to that game?" It's like, dude, no. Why? <laughs> Why would I go to that game when I can watch all the other games? Yeah. Are you crazy? <laughs> Week 13, right. Sunday. Uh, now it is December. They're at home against uh, the Packers. Yeah, that's a loss. That's bad. But they have a noon that. game, It's though. before a bye week. It is before a bye week. I just – that's going to be a loss. I just don't – I think the Packers – the scariest thing about the Packers this year is I actually think they're built to win a Super Bowl. Fuck. Like, I, I like when the Packers have an insane offense, but you know their defense will fail them. They have the flip now, and yeah. it's like you have a great defense, and now you also have Aaron Rodgers. So, like, I am legitimately terrified of the Packers winning the Super Bowl this year. Whereas in years past, it's like let's just wait till January, and something will fall apart for them. Bye week. That's a loss. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, anything can come out. It's like conflict stuff that's been. <laughs> Someone gets it's late in the year trouble, for a bye yeah. week. Real Someone dude. gets week fourteen for a bye. But you know what? I'm going to be ready for that bye week. I yes. feel, I hate when the bye week comes week six. They get you going, and it's like, what is it? Where do yeah, they usually start? Worst. Week three. Yeah, because you want a bye week later. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think okay. I think you want a bye week later when you're good. Yeah. Yeah. For the home stretch, right? Yeah, like this would if we were a Super Bowl contending team, like having a bye week and then four last games, that would be Love like a that. good be nice. setup. Yeah, like a yeah. reset. I'm just happy we're not playing on Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's huge. I, you know, it's it's been it's ruined like so many Thanksgivings mm-hmm. where it's even when we win, it's just like people just yell at us because the game's so bad. Yeah, yeah, and just playing mm-hmm. the Lions and it's just like, oh, this is gross. And and I will mention the worst. I think it was Thanksgiving, right? The Bears, Cowboys, the worst football game like ever played. When we had, I'm gonna look it up. We oh, had, like, dude, R.W. McCorders took a pick six to the house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan the Quinn orange, was the quarterback. Yeah, we yep. were in the orange jerseys. Um, I'm pretty sure. Which was it I Chad hate, Hutchinson? I hate the orange jerseys, dude. I want to say I, Testaverde was playing quarterback for those Cowboys. I oh, think he was. I, I think, think it was. Right. I think we had three quarterbacks in that game. On, oh, I'm gonna try to find it. I know I R.W. Could, had a pick six. Yeah, hunt. and it was all right. Here it is, 2004. Yeah, Testaverde was on the uh, was on the Cowboys. It's like Shane Matthews, so Danny Hutchins, Werfel. Hutchins. It was it was Quinn Hutchins. and Krenzel. Okay, and Quinn and Krenzel combined had a stat line of 15 for 31 for 91 yards. <laughs> <laughs> and two picks. That was so bad. That was <sighs> so bad. Man. So yeah, fuck Thanksgiving games. I I mean I I hate all nationally televised games until the bears can get good again nationally televised games are just a disaster yep okay all right we're out of uh we're out of the bye week we're it's sunday december 18th at home against philadelphia noon game i think we'll get killed in that game and i am high on the eagles i put a super bowl future on them Ooh. because i I figured like like the bears aren't going to be good they're not they're not gonna be a playoff team like pick one team that you can kind of have something for that you're like got your eye on. So the Eagles are my one team, twenty two to one. Why not? Okay. Fuck it. Yeah. 
Okay. Now, here's a game I very much like. This is a this is a Christmas Eve game, December 24th, at home against Buffalo. Yeah, we're going to get smoked in that one, mm-hmm. too. Really? This, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. That will be bad. I thought you were talking on all this frisky talk. It, the, but this is where the schedule just gets fucking... It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I should say the one frisky game that we could win would be against the Packers at home. That yeah. I could see happen. I don't think we're going to beat the Eagles or the Bills. I just, those teams are really, really good. So, yeah, that frisky not happening there. I don't know if okay. I like this, though, because we go from Christmas Eve and then a New Year's Day game, Sunday, January yeah. 1st at Detroit. How does this work with college football Yeah, I was scheduling? just Yeah, I was just going to ask the same it's, thing. Those it's bowl weird. games don't matter anymore. No, they think they do it the day after. I think that's what they've always done. They'll, do, they'll play those on the second? The Rose Bowl is always New Year's Day, I thought. Historically, unless it's a playoff site. Rose Bowl. No, they're – yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, they play on the second. They, this happened a few years ago. Bears so, at so, Detroit should never get priority over the Rose Bowl. They should make but, they should make the I Bears mean, play on the Oh, yeah, because the, the Rose Bowl's a day but game, too. But it's a too. free day of football. It's yeah. a free day of football. You get, yeah. like, Sunday, January 1st sucks, watch NFL, and then Monday you basically get to do January 1st again. Yeah, I like that. Just it's just like getting us one step bit. closer to March Madness. That's like any extra day of football in January is a good day. I do like that it's the last game, like big game for college football. The Rose Bowl should always be it's the granddaddy. They should always have like yes. the marquee set up. Absolutely. Um, okay, we're at week seventeen. Yeah, this is January first. Oh, no. Yeah, D- Detroit Lions. I just had the same thought. I don't think they. I don't think they sweep them this year. I'm just trying to visualize what both teams are going to look like. After, I, yeah, after New Year's uh, Eve, you know, the Lions will be well rested. I love Dan Campbell, but I do think that this is the point in the year when they're bad and his message gets stale. Yeah, I'm going to say it's a win. I agree with you. As as crazy as to say it's a sweep, I think it's going to be a win. I agree. Like if they're, it's hard to be the hard ass guy if they're not good. Right. So it's a win. Unless they're. They love him and they're playing for his job. Like we have to get a win to save his job. True, true. Okay, I'm saying a win. Okay. All right. And then the last game, last game of the season. Um, home. Yeah, home against the Vikings. And I'll just say quick. I think this is such a winnable game because I know the Vikings are going to need this for like the seven seed wild card. If another team loses and they're just Kirk Cousins, will fucking blow it. Yeah, I think this is a win because it's either going to be that or the Vikings might even win. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if the Vikings win the NFC North and they don't need this game for other reasons. So I'm going to say this is a win. And I I went to Bears-Vikings in Minnesota week 17. I don't know what year it was. 16? It was Mitch. Mitch was – it was the last John Fox game, and that was a bad game. That's a sad game. That was a really bad game. It was a sad, (laughs) sad game. Tough. Very sad game. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so what do I end up with? Seven and ten. So they're over Whoa. the win. The over the win total is six and a half. And I didn't think we had any like crazy wins on that board. Did no. you count? Not really. I didn't either. Yeah, I, I, Miami maybe. Miami maybe, but I do think that they could beat the Falcons, so that could be a wash. And uh, you know. and I had us losing to the Giants, so I. Yep. I don't think seven wins is that crazy. That's frisky. That's frisky. Yeah, that gives that's that's like slingshot into next year type of territory. Yeah, all that money coming off the books. Yeah, hundred million Super Bowl cap. next year. Have our draft picks finally for the first yep. time mm-hmm. in forever. Draft some, draft some dudes. Dra- be nice. Get some dudes. Some dudes. <laughs> some dudes would be nice. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you guys thought? No, this is a bad thought. But like, if the Bears are truly truly bad, and they end up with the first or second pick, like the quarterback. Who are we talking? Bryce Young. Uh, I think I'd rather have. Well, I think I'd rather have Stroud. But yeah, like it's. But then we double dip in Ohio State and be like, maybe this one will work. Yeah, I think I think Fields is. I'm not putting why, my. Why head. did you ask that? Why are you doing this to me? I'm just doing bad. I'm just doing bad thoughts. You gotta you gotta flush out the bad thoughts. These are these are shower thoughts. No, I call them because it's like I'll just be in the shower and I'll be like, fuck. What if the Bears are the worst team in the NFL? <laughs> they might Josh Rosen them. I could see it. Oh man. Will Anderson. I don't want it to happen. Will I'm just going to talk these things out now. So if it happens, we're ready and we have, we're have all on the same page. 
The Bears have their quarterback. They'll go defense and they'll take Will Anderson. But they have their quarterback. They okay, have their like quarterback. They have their quarterback. Yes. I like that answer because Will Anderson would be fucking incredible. Yep. They Did have you guys see the uh, the Arlington Heights renderings? The, yeah, the I blogged it today. Yeah, yeah. But I, that can't be a real stadium, uh, right? I, I think that was just like no. a placeholder thing. That rendering did nothing for me. Yeah, the rendering, I, I don't. The, the rendering made me think that there's a room for a track over there. There's room for a track yeah, over yeah, there. Right. Like they just keep right. it. Yeah. yeah. So it, yeah, I don't know what that was. It was like this yeah, is the numbers like, I heard. Our our okay. horse racing guy Tony, he said that um, Las Vegas is uh, there's brand new stadiums on about 60 acres. And I think he said it was the exact number that Arlington owns is 328 acres. Yeah. They absolutely have room for a track if they want it. They could. Yeah. They don't it want would it. Be, it would be incredible because it's like, and I, I mean, I think we've talked about this, but if you're not rooting for Arlington Heights, you're not a Bears fan, in my opinion, because this is the key to the McCaskey selling and us getting some like rich owner who wants to just splurge on the bears. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is, they all work together. Like the, no one's going to buy the bears if they don't own their own stadium. And the only way they can own their own stadium is if Arlington Heights yep. happens. I did like how they put the skyline in the rendering, be like, we're so close. And I feel like that was <laughs> yeah. just to piss off Lori. <laughs> it's right it was there. like a middle finger <laughs> yeah. to her. Yeah. I think it'd be cool uh, if there's a place where you could access the Bears regularly as a fan throughout the year. Like my sentiment, not especially now through working this job, is like the Bears come to town like eight times a year to Soldier Field. Everything else, they're just so far away and excluded. Right. And there's no sense of like a campus or history or a museum. Mm -hmm. Like if it was a thing where you could go and like, yeah, the Bears are practicing or whatever. And and like, there's like a, a spot you could, I don't know, not like look in or whatever, but just kind of get like a sense of like being up on that property, like a big type of campus, bars, restaurants, you know, like fluid parking where it's like such a, now if someone gets you a ticket to a Bears game, like, yo, you want to go to the Bears game, right? You're like- It's a 12 hour commitment. Yeah, just in your head. You're like, what time am I up? How do I get out? Who else is playing that day? What do I have yep. to do? Like if the Bears could honestly create an environment where we are eager and excited the way you are about showing up to a Notre Dame yep. tailgate or the way you are about right. Northwestern shit or how you feel about Wisconsin where it's like, oh, we got big foot. It's yeah. never like that. It yeah. is literally never like that. Well, and it's also, you know, like the Bears are, are usually bad. And so I love watch, I love Sundays at home on the couch. So when you say I'm going to a Bears game, you really realistically hope to get home before the kickoff of the Sunday night game. Yeah. Because right. you're going to miss that whole afternoon slot just trying to get out of there. So I'm I'm – over i'm done with soldier field so i can't it's, wait for this to happen it's also crazy to me because like if, if if you read up on the history of soldier field and the bears like this was always temporary for them it's just yep. ended up being a hundred years of temporary like <laughs> yeah. they wanted they wanted to move in the 70s mm -hmm. they, you know the fucking band-aid they put on in you know 2000 like that it's always been like oh well this isn't really like that great for an nfl team and I just, I just want them to act like a real NFL organization. Yeah. And there, you can't do that. As cool as Soldier Field is, when you see the backdrop and like yeah. it's on the lake, the in-game experience isn't great. And I, I agree with you, Carl. Like maybe, I don't know. They fucking, they should do like a preseason game at Soldier Field, or they probably wouldn't even do that because that would be ticket money. But like Fan Fest, you know, yeah. every summer, like where it's like they have an open practice. But man, give us the new stadium. It was Super Bowl, March Madness, Big Ten Championship game, concerts. Yeah. Like just give us an major. AFC team. What? Just give us an AFC team. They'll play there. Oh, bring, yeah, bring, you bring the Cardinals back. Uh, that was, yeah, that was <laughs> Lori had teased out like maybe another NFL team would come. <laughs> yeah. 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 That would yeah. be. Imagine. I mean, they would probably be better than the Bears. <laughs> they would probably. be. and But they'd also, I feel like they'd be fucking hated. They'd yeah, be like a course. scab, basically. Until they until they won a Super Bowl, they're yeah. like, "Wow, this is kind of mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, this is nice." <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah. Oh, these guys are like Bezos has the has whatever teams at Soldier Field now, yeah. and, he made, and he like figured out a way to actually renovate it. Oh, this is yeah. cool. Yeah, uh, cool Bezos like would moving. have it like a hover stadium in the middle of a lake, and yeah, use the like Soldier a, Field a site legit, for parking. A legit like skywalk that yeah. goes like you can traverse <laughs> the whole city in like fifteen minutes. Okay, cool. I'm in on that. Um, um, yeah, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that they can be frisky. Fr frisky. I just love that it's, you know, 18 expectations was great, 19 expectations it sucked, or um, 20 and then 21, obviously, we know what happened. Now it's like, hey, 
All right. It's a fresh start. It's just football. Yeah, let's just yeah. go see the guys play well. Yeah. Play tough. Right. And it's also like I – the frisky thought came from, and you shouldn't take anything from preseason, but watching them against the Seahawks, they they were doing stuff that's like, oh, this is they're doing competent things, like they're doing the small things correctly, which you can't say was true for the end of the the Nagy era. So, yeah, just be frisky, take a step in the right direction. No one, we're not going to delude ourselves because I don't want to like get my hopes up. But then again, if they win Week One, I'm going to have my hopes up. Yeah, like holy shit, they're going to the Super Bowl. And is <laughs> like. This is, I know, like, maybe it's just a little bit of, like, the player talking. We had Darnell Mooney in, and we are like, ask him, like, oh, is it different? He goes, night and day different. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, oh, well, that sounds good. <laughs> yes. if, if it's different than what it was, then that has to be a positive. So that kind of got me a little bit skewing towards being more positive. Yes. Yes. I think they're going to actually, like, do the small things correctly, and yeah. guys are going to want to play hard, and it's – yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to watch that part. Yeah, maybe the Bears is, is one of those teams where you get like a behind the scenes look at a coach be, like preparing for the Bears. Like, hey, we have to be ready this week. Don't look at the right. record. We have to be ready this week. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. Because they're frisky. Like that's yeah. that's the, that's a good place to be. I feel like. Yes. Yeah. Can't make mistakes because they'll capitalize yep. on it. Well, thanks you, a lot for coming on, Dan. I know you got like a. Big Cat, one quick question. So, Are you going to come home for the 11 a.m. Northwestern versus Wisconsin start at Ryan Field on October 8th? I am going to be – I don't know where our college football show is that week. I think that's a college football show. But, so, yeah, I mean, Wisconsin will probably lose that game because they probably. always lose fucking Ryan Field. <laughs> probably. Yeah, no, I know. I Listen, you can't, you can't trap game me with that because I always know that Northwestern is a trap game for – Wisconsin whenever we have to go there. So, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that game whatsoever. That's going to suck. I'll be there. Uh, last the question, way, are you doing anything with the Toledo key to the city or, like, is that a serious thing? You are going to get the glass key? I think I'm going to get the glass key. Congratulations, so we'll man. Yeah. So I know you've been great. working on that. We're, we're, and you got, we'll see you guys. I I assume you guys will come out to Northern Illinois. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. No, I love the Cal. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I've actually never been to a Huskies game. I'm pumped. Oh, it's awesome. You can go you can leave at halftime and, and go back to your tailgate. Yep. And then go back in the stadium. I do that in Northwestern really? games. <laughs> yeah, no. you got it. It's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's like not obviously like in November there's not a lot of people there. So it's like you can just park almost across the street from the stadium. Park in the other end. Go zone. back. Yeah, have some fucking beers. That's good. We'll uh no a, we'll hit the dog. Aurora Riverboat Casino on the way home. Play some yeah. craps and blackjack. I'm actually thinking about it now. My wheels are spinning. Maybe we gotta we gotta we gotta talk to the Bears and see if they'll build the Barstool Chicago office at Arlington Heights. I don't really want to commute every day, but what if they built us just a sick place? Be nice, dude. Put us in the uh, village. Well, that yeah, rendering yeah. showed an easy metro ride, so yeah, you can do that. Like you need actually, you need it? businesses. Just give us a fucking warehouse, and we'll just pimp it out. We're in. Yeah. I'm in. Big cat moves back to Chicago to reverse commute. That'd yeah. be some shit. <laughs> yeah, that would that part I'm not looking for. Yeah, that I wouldn't look forward to. Um because I am gonna live in the city. But yeah, the um we're gonna find it where Pete is looking for offices right now. We're gonna find something that we're gonna have a lot of space and I Good. wanna I wanna make like a yeah. Rob Deerdick fantasy factory. Now the, the, the Bears a... don't let us interview players, but you think they're gonna build us an office? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Can we That's put the weird. new office in the point. West Loop? We're going to put the new office. Here's breaking news. We're going to put the new office wherever we can get enough space that we can make a fantasy factory. Yep. I'm so for that. everyone so might have to suck it up a little, but I'll suck it up as well. Lead from the front. Uh, I've told them we need parking. But, yeah, if if we have to be, like, you know, a few minutes away from, you know, a nice neighbor or whatever, like, wherever we have to go, that we can get max space to just do fucking fun shit, that's where we'll be. And we'll have a parking lot so everyone can drive. Perfect. It'll be great. Great. Love yeah. that. That's awesome. Yes. Dude. Sounds like the All West right. Loop to me. All right. Now I'm like, that's yeah, so sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 Thanks so much for jumping on, Dan. Uh, always a pleasure, dude. Seven and ten. Seven and ten. All right. See you, boys. See, see ya. Yeah. So anyways, thanks again. Big Cat. That's good stuff. Love the schedule preview. And it sounded a lot worse going through the schedule than when you said seven and ten. I would have thought like four and thirteen. That's what I was mentally preparing for. And then while he was going through it, I'm like, what is the win total? And it was six and a half. And then I'm like, ah, we'll never get to this. I think they'll know the exactly over. what they are after two weeks. I don't think that's the case. I really don't. I think he is right, though. It, it wasn't like an unrealistic seven. No. 
No, there's winnable games there, and, yeah. and I think you know, I don't think he's going to get them all exactly right like he did last year. But there are, you know, they could beat Atlanta, they could lose to Miami, they, you know, like there's. But I feel like seven is, you know, Vegas is usually on it, and if it's six and a half, I think that's pretty realistic. And I do genuinely believe in Justin Fields. I've decided. We all we also know nothing about this team, which is a problem. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just feel like it can't be worse. Like, well, I don't. What, I think they'll compete and they'll be organized and. What I'm saying is if after two games they do even lose the first two games, I forget already who they play. But if they go 0-2 and they're close 49ers games. 49ers and the Packers. And they look clean. The talent's just not there. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, you'll, you know exactly what you're going to get. It looks like Iberflus is at least coaching them properly. Mm-hmm. They're just not. There's no good players out there. That's what I mean. So if if after a couple games they they at least are playing fundamentally sound football, Seven wins, they'll take it. All yeah. day, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Like you said, if they're not emba- not even not embarrassing, but if they're just playing clean football, yeah, yeah. I, I think we're all kind of on the same page. I'm, I'm actually like I've gotten to the point where I'm like kind of I'm excited for the NFL, not necessarily for the you know for the Bears, but it's like football's back. Like this is this is the best. I'm not dreading it like I was maybe even a month ago. I feel like my, no, but you know what I mean. The last two seasons were just fucking agony. Oh, terrible. Of Nagy. Like, well, there's was, no like downside. You know, we're already starting so low that mm-hmm. I feel like it's like, wow, if they go four and 13, it's like, well, we never expect them to be good anyways. Let's get, a, you know, a very high draft pick and that money and let's go for it. That's like the last year of Fox when we were excited about Mitch, except this is like, yeah. we like our coach a lot more. Yep. And I mean, what was that, Mitch? Year three, year two? That was two. It was year two? Yes. With Fox? Yeah. yeah. I thought he only did one year with Fox. Was it only yeah, one year with Fox? Oh, no, you're year. right. It was yeah. one year. Yeah. Um, all right. So that was his yeah. first year. So we were excited about that too. Right. But this is a little different because it's year two. Right. And it's a better coach. So. Yes. I just hope we're not on like the third chapter of like a 25 chapter story where it's the same fucking chapter over. Like yeah, we know, yeah, it could be half there. full and all that stuff. But then I just think about like what what gets a Cleveland Browns fan to wear a bag over their head to a stadium, and like are we closer to that trajectory or are we closer to like being a good football organization, we're probably closer to wearing bags on our heads. Like, orga- authentically being that disgusted with the organization. Mm-hmm. Like, we do joke around, and it's agony, and it's brutal, and the ownership is pathetic. There is another level we can get to in the end. It can get worse. So I don't like the idea that, like, oh, well, it can't actually get worse. Like, no, I know Nagy was bad, but, like, if Fluce is worse... <laughs> How? I mean... I don't think... Was, Tre- was Tressman worse than Nagy? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So don't say Definitely. it's impossible. But we fucking true. had one yeah. of them recently. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just meant like for Flus, like Jesus. like Tressman always gave you like uh, CFL kind of seemed like just. Had, we haven't you seen Flus at the podium after a loss. We haven't seen no, him, know. you know, answer questions. At, That's or, true. Like, That's true. It's just it's just hard. He just seems he to me seems more of he seems like a younger John Fox, where it's like a little safer. That's not a bad thing. He was a great coach for the yeah, for, for a Carolina. Long time. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. Could he use someone else to compare him to? I just want to get that out. Like I just feel strongly it is not, it can get much worse. Yeah, but yeah. I do have the optimism because we don't know what we have. Defense going to be interesting, man. Yeah, DBs. I mean, if our Young. fucking rookies could play well and uh, Eddie Jackson plays better, um, front seven. I don't know. I don't know. We'll there, see. There could be. Yeah. There's a lot of things to watch any dogs where you're like oh i think this guy could be a dog or like i think i don't know yeah yeah i'm interested to see what the line looks like with that braxton jones starting left tackle larry borum second year tevin jenkins really in his first year shifting inside like if you can if one of those three guys looks like a bona fide nfl starter heading into next year i think that's probably pretty good it's funny i think when the when we first started paying attention to the nfl draft as like kids and you'd see like Robert Gallery's going third over. I'd always be like, what's with these linemen going so early? Get the running backs, get the quarterbacks. Because, you know, this is like in the mode where you're, you're playing Madden. players in Madden. Yeah. 90, everybody's at 99. But, Chief, to your point, I am I am dialed in on offensive line play this year. Yep. Where, like, you're showing up, you're like, man, I hope. Just keep them clean. Uh, spe- spe- speaking of which is completely random, somewhat related, there was a highlight going around of uh, Jim McMahon coming in against the Vikings when he had like his fucking spinal cord was snapped or whatever. And McMahon was like, I'm not playing unless it's an emergency. And the Bears were down eight with like nine minutes left in the third quarter. And McMahon was like, fuck it, I'm coming in. And the very first play, he throws like a 75 yard yeah. touchdown to Willie Galt. Dude, I'm not joking. I put this clip on Twitter, go look at it. 
Walter Payton picking up a blitz. Oh yeah. That's Holy like a, fuck of all the like stuff they talk about where Walter Payton was like elite as oh he could catch it out of the backfield. He was a tough runner. He never Dude, went down. Yeah. You ever he seen picked him throw up this a blitz. football? He fucking killed a guy. I mean legit killed a guy. Yeah. Watch him throw. But that he could throw a ball like 70 yards on a fucking fuck. line. I didn't yeah. see No the, wonder people are like, no, nah, no, nah, dude. Like they, that was a moment. Obviously, you've seen the highlight clips. Yeah. I had never seen him. I had never like that this moment play had not registered on my brain. Um, and instantly I was like, I gotta call my dad and ask him if he knows about this blitz pick up. Dick uh, <laughs> like Dick uh, I've seen him interviewed about it when he was more like coherent and he would just knew, he knew like the play call. And he's like, that's the play where, and he's like, it was like greatest block of all time. And people talk about it. It's like one of, of a guy who has like infinite highlights. They're like, that's a top five highlight for Walter Payton. Crazy. So, I love that shit. So yeah. maybe we'll see uh, maybe some good blitz pickups this year. Hopefully. Keep them clean. Keep them healthy. Anybody want to offer up like a firm prediction just in case you hit it on the nail and you can come back 18 weeks later and say, I fucking told you guys so on a social I like clip. that seven and 10. I think they're going to, I think five and 12. Yeah, I think five and 12 is more. More more realistic, but well, I'm usually more optimistic than you guys. Yep. So yep. That's I think they fine. win those back to back games. What was it, Miami and the Jets? And then they Yeah. And that's like that. and then and then into the Packers. Into the fucking graphic, Dave. I got a weird last, weird. Do you think we have one feeling. week on the graphic at all this year? No. 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 Not, Not even at the so. bottom of in the hunt, knowing that if they put us on the graphic, I mean, it's don't go they, nuts on social. Don't, don't they, they do start? that by default though? Like week. 10 say and they're not mathematically eliminated quite yet the lions have never been on the graphic i guess that's true plenty of teams don't make the graphic. eddie jackson did say he's like he's watched every single play of his first handful of years in the nfl what is this year five for him i believe yeah, yeah something like that he's watched every single play to get back to where he was <coughs> his second year just as disgusted as you are be fine. Yeah, he, he actually did. He's yeah. like, I wasn't. I, he did admit he was bad. He he was fucking horrible last year. Horrible. Well, hopefully it got to his head, and hopefully he's going out there like a dog. Hopefully. Uh, we've seen he can do it before. Well, Bears fans, White Sox fans, uh, a lot of people in Chicago right now. We we do want to encourage you stay focused throughout the season. You know, this is going to be a busy crunch time, and a lot of you guys out there uh, looking to refill your ADHD medication. I know it's a pain in the ass. It's a headache. So do, do yourselves a favor. We want to thank our friends at Innovative Care for sponsoring this episode. Uh, and they can very much help you with ADHD uh, medication management. You must be a resident of Illinois. Uh, we talk a lot about these guys. Insurance is accepted. It's compassionate. They're caring. Uh, anytime you work with their, their service side and, you, you know, you get exposure to their uh, professionals, it's very seamless. I'll mm -hmm. say that. A yeah. bunch of clinics. They're right over there on uh, Fullerton and uh, Ashland. Yep. So if you're in, if you're in the area, stop on over there. And then after that, it's like telemedicine, so you could just do it on Zoom or whatever. Yep. Piece of cake. All you have to do is go to innovativeadhd.com and remember what Carl said: have to be a resident of Illinois, and they do accept insurance. So very very simple to use. Everyone should check it out. Yeah. You guys got insurance? Go use it. Use your insurance. Um. Again, yeah. Thank you, Innovative Care. Should I say this too? Uh, before I move on to White Sox was uh, the the boys are barking in the NFL uh, group chat. Where do you think the Bears rank on uh, beer prices at the stadium? The way that you asked makes me think it's it's awful. Quite high. I think it's probably really low. We are in the 5 through 10 range. For most, most expensive? Most expensive, yes. Yeah. That's what I would guess. At 11 yeah. bucks. I would guess top five, actually. 11 bucks. Us, the Bills, the Rams, the Eagles, the Dolphins, and the, the Giants, and the Chargers are $11. Well, the West Coast teams make sense. Say the other ones. Uh, that are above us or yeah. the ones that are in the same Yeah, one? leave like the California ones out of here. So the ones that are the most expensive, there's four at eleven fifty. The Niners, the Bucks, the Saints, and the Jags. And then there's one up top at fourteen dollars per beer, and that is the Washington Commanders. <laughs> I love Daniel I Snyder. That. The cheapest <laughs> beers in the NFL. There are three teams with Jacksonville, five, the Panthers, Buffalo. Jack, Jacksonville. He just said Jacksonville. They're in Florida. Those people don't stop drinking. Yeah. Buffalo? No, they're in the top five. Those oh, people don't sorry, stop drinking. Uh, yes. Can I guess? Bad brains. Yeah. Yeah, you can guess. All right, Detroit Lions, Charlotte, uh, pa uh, the the Carolina Panthers, and um, Houston Texans. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Nashville. Oh, Atlanta, Tennessee, Atlanta. The Falcons are charging. The Falcons, the, Fal the Falcons, <laughs> probably have a fucking club where, like, you know, they're paying you to drink their stuff. What'd you say? I'm gonna say uh, Tennessee Titans. Yeah. 
I will. Because the now Bears I'm... drank them out of out of like Nashville, basically yeah, a few years ago. That. So they ran that out. That was of the beers. whole city, not just the stadium. Yeah, I'll say I'll say Arizona and Kansas City. Okay, was. Carl, you got two out of the three with the Falcons, obviously. And the Lions, the other one, surprising. The New York Jets. Oh, that's stunning. Five bucks a beer. Well, they're winning five over. The, they're, they're stealing Giants fans left and right. I was right. going to say, it's pretty cheap because it's like, uh, I think you pay $10, but you're getting a tall boy every time. Oh, really? So it's like, if you do the math, it's like cheaper than going to the bar. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. insane yeah. for a stadium. Hey, the White Sox have the second worst I saw the other day at eleven seventy five a beer. That's crazy. But it's also it's sixteen ounce beer. My other but notes least, here, I don't like the Bengals are five twenty seven and the Steelers are nine twenty nine. Don't don't not round number. No, me. you fucking Who's five twenty seven? The Bengals. Is that an area code? <laughs> but if you're does that mean is that like the average price or is that like this says uh beer price at every stadium twenty twenty two season? Um, no, that's just all okay. It says. So you're going, you're going up to the register, and they're like, "Give us five twenty-seven. Yeah. <laughs> does it give a size? It does not. Yeah. It's okay. Not. It's a crazy difference between the Jets and the Giants. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's very more crazy. than double the price. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Jerry Reinsdorf was squeezing you guys that try to. Yeah, that's oh, from yeah. NFL on Fox okay. Instagram account too. So good source. No, that's a good that's a good thing you just brought to the table here, Ed. I appreciate you bringing that up. That's interesting. Cuz now my brain's racing about beer prices. Mm -hmm. do, have you guys uh at the sell do they do they take cash still? Oh, I, dude, they got to get cash back. I Wrigley doesn't do take cash. I went I and tried to buy a scorecard and they were like, "Nope, I had to go to some machine in the fucking concourse and throw 100 into it." Now I got like a Cubs prepaid card. So I got to buy four, 39 more scorecards score with it. <laughs> I that haven't sucks. tried to pay it's unbelievable. cash all year, I don't think, but I th I want to say they take cash. Do you Venmo the guy or no? <laughs> the vendor? Yeah. No, I pay card. Got what you. are you talking about? Venmo. <laughs> I mean, the the ability of keeping a straight face by that is something <laughs> I, know. I mean, it's one of the most. It's coming soon, though, jokes aside. Cashless? Yeah, well, you'll be able to fucking Venmo the guy. Fuck yeah, you will. You'll build a QR code. Beep. Bro, you just tap That's the fucking no. Apple Pay. Tap they the fucking thing. That. No. Yeah. yeah. Do we, you don't this, do that. You've never used your phone to tap. Never You've once. never <laughs> tapped and gone. <laughs> never once. That's probably one of those guys that thinks. Like, I don't even. I didn't even know about my card could tip. tap until like the last month. Until someone's like, just tap here. Yeah. You probably ignored them the whole Had time. Had no you, idea. You did the insert. It says it on every register. It says tap. Yeah, but it's like indescript on where you tap. Haven't you seen the commercials of like the fucking young professional women running around town with their yeah. coffee? But I figure they got that's the satchel. Like, you know, they're late. Yeah. They just went to the gynecologist and now they're getting a fucking big sales meeting. But that's for people like Jennifer Garner, not me. <laughs> Even his references are old. She hasn't been relevant in like 20 years. She's in the commercials. She's on a Capital One venture. Yeah, she's in the commercials. She is. She's a lady about town, dude. She's. Yeah. I, don't I don't think, think she acts anymore. I think she I don't just think does those she's worked in a movie since like. Catch me if you Juno? can. Juno? Hey. Yeah, or Juno. Yeah. I'm going to get a Miller. I'll Venmo you. Hold what? On. Hey. <laughs> no, at, at, for the scout seats, they do take Venmo. Oh. I swear to God. Okay, good to know. Were you in, was speaking, were you in White Sox Twitter drama this weekend? Yeah, a little bit. Like in, but like the deep yeah. White Sox Twitter. But this isn't people this criticizing is person, you for being a Barstool sports guy. No, oh, big time, big time. Oh. It's, and it's gone on for years now, and she has a... She called me a racist, and we can keep this in or out. I don't give a shit. <laughs> no, and I'm like, yeah, you psycho. I burn crosses in my front yard. And she sends that screenshot all over the place without providing an ounce of context. So I'm like, if you want to fucking go down this route, well, let's boogie. And she said my name, and I fucking went at her, and she deleted her account. If the White Sox were up for a fight every day the way White Sox Dave is, they'd That's be all 20, White Sox Twitter, though. They'd be 25 games up. It's all of White Sox Twitter. And that is true. Lance Lynn, he was trying to fight someone last week. I thought they were going to get in a brawl last night. Maybe there was plunk, a little plunk war going on. But, I mean, I, I don't got much to say in the White Sox. It's Nothing has changed. I mean, they're winning right now, aside from losing that, last that's week. That's a big change. I mean, but <sighs> all right, next week. Was, I'm sorry. You tried to uncancel again. No, I didn't. I thought Kevin sent out a text message being like, you were texting him being like, yo, what are the rules again? Make it for No, me. no, no, no. Kevin's a fucking moron. Don't listen to Kevin on anything ever. Um, <laughs> I wanted the formal rules because they started playing 
very good baseball, like clean baseball. It wasn't winning by smoke and mirrors like when they were beating the Astros a few weeks back and shit like that. They were playing good baseball. And I'm like, I'm not, I wasn't ever considering unconsoling them again. I was wondering, like, um, am I allowed to actively root for them to win and to make the playoffs? And he said, yeah, of course, but just don't say unconsoled. That was basically it. Oh. So, um, but yeah, Kevin, he's a, he's a fucking clown dick. Um, <laughs> Aside from that, yeah. But like I said, nothing has changed. I still think they should win the division. They control their own destiny. They got a lot of games against Cleveland, a lot of games against Minnesota, and they're starting to beat the shit out of the Twins right now. But um, they they just put up, they have a tendency to just put up fucking stinkers. And sometimes, oftentimes this summer, they've strung stinkers together in a row. Like an How awesome long has game. How Miguel Cairo they, been managing now? Uh, I think this entire streak. So I think he's five and two. I want to say so. F- about a week. Um, there were some rumors that I uh, that had come across that were like Tony is going to be in a position where towards the end of the season he's going to like slowly back out and it's going to be. Nah, that's all bullshit. Team. That's all bullshit. Okay, it's all. Bu- I've, I've, yeah, those rumors do exist, and I've seen them. And people are like, oh, dude, I heard this from this person who heard it from his sister's cousin's wife's husband's. Nice, all that kind of shit. And no, he's a fucking old guy. He got his pacemaker switched out or something. And But Steve Stone thinks he's going to be back in the dugout. I know Scott Merkin thinks he's going to be back in the dugout by the end of this year. Like, we were joking with Big Cat uh, a little bit ago about how everyone's like, oh, I hope he's healthy, but don't ever manage again. That's the truth. I mean, no one wants him back in the dugout. How many, like the whole therapy thing we did last week for stool scenes, that was an obvious bit. Like, he's so fucking, the game has passed him by by a decade plus, and he doesn't belong managing a team anymore. And if the White Sox are serious about, serious about winning this division, he hurts your chances if he's back in the dugout at winning this division. Yeah. Now, that is. I have no idea what kind of manager Miguel Cairo is. He would be the acting manager for the remainder of this year and probably into next year because that's just how the White Sox work because they're fucking idiots. But um, like it, 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 there is zero possibility of it being worse than what Tony La Russa is doing with the the fucking two strike intentional walks, the stupid lineup construction, Lurie Garcia playing. It's like you cannot be worse. The only option is being as bad, which I don't think would be the case, or better. So no one wants Tony La Russa back. I'm sorry, dude. Ride right off into the sunset with your World mm-hmm. Series rings, your Hall of Fame career. Second of all time in wins, go away. Go be a fucking advisor or something. I actually don't even do that because you don't need to be making any player personnel decisions. You already did one with Larry Garcia, and he is the worst player I've ever seen play Major League Baseball. So, hope your heart's all good. Don't come back, please. That's, I think, a very fair take. Okay. Do you think they're making the playoffs, Carl? Unbiased. Um, Two and a half out right now? Three. And the uh, Twins got canceled yesterday with the Yankees to weather. So, they got a doubleheader today, and the Twins cannot beat the Yankees. Okay. And uh, the uh, Cleveland is playing Kansas City, and Kansas City – they're stink. They stink. So yeah. So it's tough because with there's like 27, 28 games left, and to make up that ground, if the if Cleveland's playing five hundred ball, like you then you're asking the White Sox to play like seven fifty ball or so, yeah. not seven fifty, but yeah, yeah. It's like really tough. What's the score? Twins are up three nothing. Okay. Um, at the time <laughs> of recording, yeah, at the time of recording though, and the White the Sox also play. Uh, I just pulled them up. White Sox yeah. are about first pitches. First pitch like 10, 15 minutes for the White Sox, anyways. And they're going against Luis Castillo, which should be a good matchup because uh, for the Mariners, oh. they haven't seen him, and they I don't they, I don't know if any of those guys have ever seen him. Probably and not. He's like Probably one of the not. filthiest fastball uh, changeup guys in the last like twenty years. He's like a mini Pedro Martinez. So if the Whites, I'm saying this because if the White Sox go on, they win this game against the Mariners and they take a series from the Mariners on the road, 
while the Mariners are one of the five hottest teams in baseball, pitching it extremely well. Then you go into after Oakland. Logan Gilbert goes out last night, six innings, five hits, nine Ks, that dude one is walk. Fucking he's fucking nasty. nasty. And he's gone the entire season without showing a lick of emotion and then fucking pumps 9,900 first pitch of the game last night in the sixth inning. AJ Pollock and just puts him fucking down and is coming off the mound, slamming the fucking jersey. And you don't see that from a guy like Logan Gilbert. He just isn't that guy, which is all about just how much the Mariners are rolling right now. And that's a team that's like, they, they are going out to win the AL pennant 100%. The Mariners are, when they show up, they're like, that's how good we are. And so all of that is being said because if the White Sox take the series yeah. from them on the road, they they didn't play a clean game at all last night. They win a one-run game. If they come out and Kopech goes pitch for pitch with Luis Castillo, the bullpen does their job. They put together four, they win a game 4-1 on a getaway day, go play the fucking quadruple-A Oakland Athletics mm -hmm. for four straight days. like. That's that's such a big that'll be the biggest swing we've talked about bigger than the two games against Houston going into the next two games at four game series if you remember that uh, the poster White Sox like if I'm a White Sox fan I've been mad all season and I'm fucking thankful that the last 28 games the ball is completely in their court that it's, it's not a, even like if it was a five game lead mm -hmm. then the tone's completely different and but I, like there has been a couple games over the last you know like few weeks where they're like hey they've won you don't want to be worried about Liam Hendricks only blown save in the second half is against the Orioles when fucking Angle dropped the ball in left field coming into foul ball territory mm -hmm. like there's all like oh that was a bad moment whatever fuck that bad moment they also stole a couple games and then because of that, they find themselves in this position where it's like, dude, you get really hot. Fucking Dylan Cease is plus 140 to win the LCI on right now. He was plus 500 last week when I said go bet on this thing. Damn. And it goes out almost no hitter. McClanahan's not well, going to be on the mound. Verlander's not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But in and, and McClanahan's, he's probably shot. Let's not fucking yeah. joke either. That is a boost, dude. Like those guys showing up in the clubhouse, if the AL Cy Young Award winners, like, like if not to, if Cease is like, Coming down the stretch and knowing you have this guy with all this momentum and juice and steam. And, and don't see, even forget about Johnny Cueto. Right, Lance Lynn has pitched his pitch awesome. well. Awesome, yeah. And the type of guy who's probably been sitting around just wait, just fucking wait, just wait till I get going. And now he's going. Um, he's been awesome, yeah. And so then you have guys like, you know, we'll go back to Grandal for a second. Uh, is he on the IL? No, he he's back. Okay, so now this is a guy who has traditionally been very good offensively who's going through the worst extended stretch of his entire life as a baseball player, who's probably showing up to the field with the same amount of confidence that he had when he was rolling. And, and is now being like, all right, wait a second. Fucking four weeks left? Guardians? Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. And this is kind of like a... Uh, you, well, that's my entire point is everyone's like, oh, you got to play uh, Sebi Savala. And I'm like... And I, I do get riding the hot hand. Like, I would absolutely do that. Like, Mikata played well last night aside from being a fucking asshole in the field, which he typically isn't. I thought that was an unlucky bounce. That he should have told Andrews to cut the ball. Everyone's trying to put any blame on Andrews at all. It's like, no, it's not. Like, if no, if if you're not the third baseman on that play, he's, he's yelling cut or he's yelling nothing. If he yells nothing, the ball's going through the cut and there's a play at third, but there was no play at third to be made because he was safe by a fucking mile. And Dave's talking about a routine play in the Got White Sox three Mariners guys. Play, uh, game that put the Mariners up one nothing. that was like enough to win the game. And it was just like a routine cutoff play throw from right field. Uh, and the ball went into the camera well. And so he was awarded home plate. So they ended up scoring a run. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was – and, and – it, that's the kind of shit that has lost them so many fucking games this year. Poor fundamentals, not backing up, uh, missing cuts. I granted Gavin Sheets should not be in the outfield ever, but like him throwing it all the way to third base, that's not how you're taught to play the outfield. You're taught to throw the ball through the cut, not to the third baseman. Yeah. They so, can they can make a run though. They got four in Oakland, and then they got a day off on Monday. Then they got two at home against Colorado, which is kind of funny because it's like this is classic Major League Baseball. Like, no. Go out on the <laughs> West Coast, take a day off, and now we're going to send a West Coast team the to the Midwest. Bonnie Green concert. That um, it, it, T A. We should know about him really soon. But yeah, I mean, I that's, like that's one guy. Six like, weeks, and that was a month. Elvis ago. Andrews, he's playing so yeah. fucking well right now. You got to ride the hot hand. But those if, are the most fun guys to come into where they come out of nowhere and they're veterans and yeah. they're like, I feel like the Cubs it's had so, so many weird. of those guys. It's in the so weird watching mm -hmm. him play because mm -hmm. he plays the game the right way. 
And like <laughs> so any a fucking any, big league everyday shortstop for like 15 years. But you don't see these guys, many of whom are veterans on the White Sox. They just constantly fuck up fundamentally. Yeah, because no one really is bitched about Elvis Andrus in his career the way people bitch about these White Sox players. Like he's a guy who just showed up and like. Yeah. But yeah. on your point on, on Grandal, and I'll throw Mankata in here, is they need someone to hit a quality right-handed pitcher. It's not going to be any. I mean, Gavin Sheets, sure, but nobody else in the lineup is just going to consistently pound right-handed pitching. Other than those two guys who have shown they can do that very well in the past, and if they don't get hot, I mean, that's the season, anyways. And on on the whole Kunsel thing, I want to make it clear the Yankees just scored. I want to make it clear that I wasn't Kunseling the White Sox as if they they weren't going to make the playoffs. I'd never ever wavered from that. Like they probably won't, maybe won't. It doesn't matter. This isn't what we were promised. Even if they do sneak by because the division is just so embarrassingly bad. Like I just finally accepted that they were like a 500 team in a bad division. And that's where the whole console came from. And I thought that they were going to finally start playing consistently how not even that they played last year, even maybe better than they played last year when they won the five games in a row against, and then the two against Houston. That's what it was. So, but I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna make the playoffs and then get completely fucking cream puffed in the first round. Which is, I mean, who? What's the fucking point of that? What's the point of that? Well, that's not why. I, I mean, play. yeah, but I don't know, dude. Come on, but it's better to. But like that, if just you smash in the first round. You got Dylan Cesar, so it's eight two thirds, no hit ball Saturday night against the Twins, must win game. He would take the ball game one. Get and you're the going, fuck What's the out point? of my face. Dave, how? How? There's, how? There's nothing better than that big game feeling, and you're of gonna course, get, of right, course. So. But I mean, watching this team play for you're now, too dark, you know, you're too deep in wanting games. fucking the, the, Jerry and the, those decision makers you to don't feel tell pain. Me what I'm too deep in. That's how it sounds. Dave, if you're saying you don't want them to go to the playoffs at this point, it's like well, I, then you I want, want them, them to, to be to wrong. You want them to be wrong. I want them to go to the playoffs, but I I know if they go to the playoffs, they are the worst team in the playoffs. What's the point of being the worst team to sneak but through a bad hold, division to go to the playoffs? Just won the World Series. Hold on. Yeah, in a good division. Yeah, but, and they got hot, and you're arguing the exception to the rule. No, but that. But How often do 85 win teams win the World Series and get as hot as possible? Sure, it could happen with the White Sox. Is it going to? Do you think it's going to? Probably not. Do you think so? Yeah, but it's better not. to be in the dance than not. Of course, and, and I'm my, not saying it's not. But there are but people that saying it's not. show that I are think, thinking that. Like there are people out there that not. are like, yeah, let's fucking go. Like when there get, are tons of White Sox yeah. fans right now that are like, yeah, let's fucking go. That showed up just as often as you have this year. That has watched that team oh. just as much. That have been just as mad oh. or just as happy or whatever. And now it's like no. 28 games left. Like I, I think there's a huge, huge portion of White Sox people out there that are like, fine, fuck it. We just get in the playoffs and like we can. Fucking... I'm thinking the same thing. No, but 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 I, I'm th- but I'm, I'm I can also separate heart from head. Yeah, but my my point is that if they make the playoffs, by definition of the season, uh, they're gonna get hot. So they're going to be playing well. And then the narrative would be like, well, you have the a, hot team in the playoffs. And they sure. got the Cy Young winner. And then it's like, holy shit, maybe Eloy finally I, figured I, it out. I've and gone Robert. through every but then it's single like, scenario in my head. But on paper, they don't stack up to the Houston Astros. Sure, but if they and go, on, if they go, if they go 20 and 8 and Robert, Eloy, TA comes and back. I think Robert and, might be done. He. Yeah, but that's—I mean, his wrist—he can't even swing it back. Okay, right but I'm just saying. Let's yes, just, I understand. If your they point. get it, you know, Vaughn, whoever, and they're like tearing the cover off the ball, and you have the Cy Young winner, and you have Kopech and Lynn's going, like all of a sudden, there's like a path towards beating somebody, and and like you will, you're—I'm saying that if you go through this month. Your tone okay. will change. You will be excited for game one oh, and, be, and hopeful. Be, I'm excited for the game right now. I want this fucking podcast in, but I'm not done saying what I want to say. If the White Sox make the playoffs and they're playing the Tampa Bay Rays or whoever in the first round, and the odds come out on the series winner and they're plus 500, you taking the money line? Are you taking the money line? Is anybody with a brain taking the money line? More than That's likely what we're not. talking about. We're that, talking about being a fan. Don't talk to me about being a fan because I live and breathe with this team, and I'm I can also tell you what the team is while rooting for them to win every single night. Yeah, but you also just said like, well, who? Why? That's not why you play to go in and get fucking smashed in the first I'm not, round. I'm talking about that from like the front office perspective. 
from okay. from the team construction perspective, from the roster construction perspective. Yeah, well, it's too late to change it now. Of course it is. Right. So, so. It, and it's been a 500 team that's bounced back and forth between. I mean, they've gotten to five over 500 and five under 500. Yeah. That's been the, who they are for 135 games or whatever so far this year. So, like, are, are they, they? They could theoretically just go on a fucking tear and win a World Series. Sure, that's not outside the realm of possibilities, but chances are that's not going to happen. They're going to go into a first round against a much better quality construction, uh, roster construction, whoever that team is, and probably lose that series. That is not why they're playing. I'll even direct it to the general manager who said we're playing for multiple parades. So I'm holding them to their word. Yeah, I know. I'm. I What's know. wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. I mean, I, I want to go. I want the White Sox to win the division, and go to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Even if that means bringing Tony Roos back next year, because I don't think Rick Hahn would let this this season um, be like, oh, there is injuries. I think they he will make vast changes, figure out how and do it. But that, like, I I don't. I'm not rooting for them to not go to the playoffs so I could be like, oh, I told you so. so Absolutely tale, not. Tale is oldest time on the show. Just whoever whoever's really deep in there with the team, you're fucking like fuck this team. Like I'm watching them, they suck. And then if you're not, you're like, hey, well, what if this, this, and this happens? Yeah. You know, it's same thing. It really, it really is. Yeah. I, yeah, but I I just think his perspective and his level of optimism will change after if they go twenty and eight this month. That's my point. Like you won't you yeah won't, maybe that's what I'm saying. But and that's what it would take uh, kind of to get them in the playoffs is like a super hot last twenty eight games. I don't not even completely because they play the tribe in, in Minnesota a bunch mm-hmm. in those in these next 27 28 games whatever it is. So like I I I but I have accepted. First of all the Guardians, I almost did it. The Guardians are a horrific matchup for them in every way because it's power ready after power ready. And the White Sox like I just said cannot hit right-handed pitching with any consistency whatsoever. They can't hit anything with any consistency. But, sure, could they get hot? Maybe. But when I counseled them a few weeks back, it was because I had accepted that that is the team they are. And that didn't mean that they won't go to the playoffs. That didn't mean that I abandoned ship. It didn't mean that I I think that um, that they should just pack it in and mm-hmm. sell at the deadline. It was none of that. It was just like, this is who they are. And if they do win the division, it'll be a product of being in a dog shit division. Yeah, would you? Yeah, I mean, I know. I, I do think that. And is that what is that what like we as White Sox fans were promised? No, it wasn't. So I and White Sox fans have every ounce to be negative and pissed off about this team, even if they do make the playoffs. Yep. The only thing that can change yet, I would say, is an ALCS appearance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ben. I, I think, but you're yeah. I mean, are you just saying, yeah, to shut me up? Or are you saying, well, yeah, like, because yeah, you finally get I, what I'm, I'm saying? No, I, I mean, I've understood what you're saying the whole time. But it's just like, I do think that, it, I would I would say that most White Sox fans would say that this team has underperformed this oh, year. Oh, a thousand percent. Right. And if you head into the They're year. They're not going to have a twenty uh, a guy who hits 20 home runs more than likely. Right. So my point is Jesus that is if, if they play to That's the standard, crazy. that is crazy. If they play to the standard and the expectation level that it was in March, then it's like, then you look at it differently because it's like, holy shit, this is the team that we were hoping for. And it's finally here better late than never. And now all of a sudden, I think that would change the whole vibe of the fan base and the team, et cetera. And it's, then you can do the TA and everybody it's us against the world. We got the, we got two big horses up front. And I don't, I, I don't think that you would walk into a series being like, we don't have a fucking chance. We no, suck. I, I, I mean, think you would be like, I would, let's go get fucking get them. And I, that's exactly what I would do. Right. That's what I've been but, saying. But that still doesn't change the fact that this team for 120 whatever games has been. And, and it's not because not just because they've underperformed. Underperformance has been a big part of that. What was the year the Rockies went to the World Series? They won like 20 games in a row to get in. Yeah. They played the Rays Seven. that year, right? Matt Holiday got fucked out of the they played MVP the Red Sox. award. It was Jimmy the Red Rollins. Sox. It was the Red Sox. Because Matt Holiday played on West Coast time. Hit 340. Had, so like a, had 1,100 OPS. Didn't get the MVP award. And they won 90 games. They <clears> went un, like ungodly hot down the stretch. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, I... Uh, 
Right, or you like wild card, you'd be the three seed against the six seed. You know, the six seed would be, you know, maybe maybe it's the Orioles. So it's like, all right, you're playing the Orioles in a three game series in the wild card. And then the winner of that gets the one seed. Yeah. Yeah. The nobody in I mean, I would be shocked and, and if anybody in the AL interesting thing about the AL ALDS this year, if the White Sox get to the ALDS. I think I talked about this last week, but um, the wild card is played on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Okay. So the White Sox go to the wild card and they win it in two days. Mm-hmm. Then they're off on Sunday, right? Okay. Uh, then the NLDS starts on Monday. You all right, Dave? I'm, I'm listening. He spilled on his computer. Keep going. So they would finish the wild card on Saturday if they win the first two games. Mm-hmm. They'd be off Sunday. They'd be off Monday. Then they would play game one on Tuesday. They're off Wednesday. Then they'd play game two on Thursday. They're off Friday. So you get multiple Dylan. So if they if they get to the wild card and they win it, then you go into the ALDS and you you have Lance Lynn and Dylan Cease in the first two games. And then you go to the ALDS and you've got Dylan Cease, Lance Lynn, Johnny Cueto. Then you could bring back. I mean, realistically, I get it. I get it. But the you like, could have a fully rested Dylan Cease after, pitching one and four, not like oh we'll bring him back on three days rest. You could have a Dylan Cease five I, days yeah, in the Dylan playoff. Sees. That's that's like unheard of in a, in a DS. You got your phone on, phones on you? Yeah, always. Put your money where your mouth is. No. Bet the White Sox to win the, win the division. Well, I think the whole point is we have. Well, I actually looked it up. It's not live on our book right now to win the division. Okay. My point is is. Regardless of what has happened this year, the team, whether or not it gets hot, is a very flawed team. Mm -hmm. Sure, they could get hot, maybe in a 1% of 1% chance win a World Series, maybe. But after watching, I think I've probably missed 66 and 65. I've probably missed about, I would say, eight games total this year. So I've watched 97% of White Sox games this year. They pretty much are what they are. They got shut out last night against a quality right-handed pitcher. They got another one on the bump against them right now. I'm not confident they're going to win this game. Maybe they do. But it's 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 they are what they are. And if they do win the division, it won't be – it more than likely won't be because they got really hot. It's because the rest of the division just completely fucking blows. Yeah. So am I supposed to be happy with that ALDS appearance? If they win it and go to the ALCS and put up a complete dogfight – or ALCS yeah. and put up a dogfight, yeah, I'll be happy with that. But that won't – like as soon as they're eliminated, I'll be like, all right, what are you going to do to fix this? Because it will be the exact same fucking thing next year. And I'm not doing this this roller coaster again. It's been bad. Yeah. And what every single White Sox fan that is a fan on my level, which is most White Sox fans, I would say, because there's not really a ton of casual White Sox fans out there, they would agree with me. Yeah. So only thing we'll I got on the Cubs is Hayden Wesneski made his debut last night. Uh Five innings. Wade Miley was back. We we're like, why is Wade Miley starting? He's making his fifth start of the year. We're paying a ten million bucks. You want to talk about baseball? That dude slider him. is fucking wicked. Paying Wade Miley ten million made four starts this year. So he came back, made his fifth start. Kind of like a uh, an audition for the offseason next year. If Wade Miley wanted to do us a favor, come back at you know two and a half, three million. He won't do it. He's a professional athlete. I would actually disrespect him if he did it. That's just wishful thinking. Would be nice. Uh, do me a solid. Anyways, he he was like the quote unquote opener last night. Really, it was Hayden Wesneski, which is the guy they traded Scott Efros, who's like an emerging late inning reliever this year. Like he's been really bad. For six the years of control in front of him. Like okay, let's roll with this guy. They trade him the Yankees. The Yankees need late inning bullpen help. We get this guy from AAA. The reason he doesn't crack the Yankees rotation is because they don't have room for him, mm-hmm. which is hilarious to think about because then the Yankees turn around, they trade Jordan Montgomery, they bring in Frankie Montas. He's hurt. They think they're getting Pablo Sanchez. You know what the Yankees need right now more than anything else? A Let's short start. stop. The second thing they need, fucking starting pitching. So mm-hmm. the Cubs get this guy. They roll him out last night. It's kind of weird to say it was like a hype thing. This isn't like a big, big hype thing, but it is like – 
We didn't do much of the trade down line. We did get this guy, and he is supposed to be like a super underrated prospect where people were like, if he wasn't within the Yankees organization, then he'd absolutely be like a bigger name and all this stuff. Okay. So he gets over to the Cubs. He comes in last night, five innings. I think he scattered two hits, eight strikeouts. Uh, no. Yeah, eight strikeouts, gave up one hit. We got to have him in to do the Miller White ad reads with uh, Frankie Bergeson. Oh, dude, like, that's that a great one. That name just fucking fits perfect. Wiz so. Nasky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I like this stuff, and I, I like I would like to call him the Wiz or something mm -hmm. like that if he, you know, like nobody beats and the I'm Wiz. The Wiz. Yeah. Yeah. Something along the lines, but uh, it was cool to nobody see his him. mix in the zone. He's got like good sink, run, his slider. I watched uh, good I watched depth on the slider. In an inning or two, his slider is filthy. Filthy and very good mound presence. He punched out the first two guys in his career. I just like this is soft stuff that there is no statistic for the way a pitcher walks around the mound after he records a strikeout. But I would I would grade him out as high as I possibly could for a rookie in his debut. I just he looked like he belonged, good. and it's just a good environment to come from the Yankees, where like you're in that development system, and it's just all this pressure when you get up there, and people are so judgmental. It's a very hard system to break into the big leagues consistently. That's why you, you rarely ever see, like it just never happens. And uh, I shouldn't say never, but it's just so fucking rare. And so for him to come over his comments afterwards, like this is crazy how packed it is on a you know, a Tuesday it night. Crazy. It is. Don't even get me going. It's crazy. Don't. Don't do that. It's the most crowded it's ever been for as yeah. bad as they are. Yeah. Uh, so that's my stuff on the Cubs. That was positive. That was positive. And then obviously Pools hit 695 against us in his last AB. So credit yep. to that guy. Did a thing on our YouTube page if you're interested more. Shout out Danny Lance. Um, just kind of like a deep dive on how much Albert Pujols kills the Cubs and how he got to the big leagues. So. Yep. You want one more positive thing? Yeah. Highest authority. There have been no calls in, about Taves and Kane getting traded. None. So all the rumors out there, nope, don't believe a single word. And supposedly they're like fired up to play for Luke Richardson. What so, if do you ever get the sense that they're – That what? You got on – just say it. Don't sugarcoat it. Do you know they're, you're going to pump that? Like, do, it, are they using you as a double secret agent? And you don't know it. No. I, what would be the point of that? I mean, I, 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 I've always been suspicious of these rumors. I thought the timing of them was weird, and the sources were weird. I'm not accusing yeah. you of that either. I'm saying like yeah. the 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 excitement in your voice yeah. doesn't typically happen when you talk about the Blackhawks. Yeah, I mean they're not going to be good. Um, they're not going to be good. Vegas has their, uh, or our book, I should say, has their point total at 67 and a half, which would be, uh, they had 68 last year. So they would be picking around fifth or sixth, which is not really in the Connor Bedard territory. Um, but, you know, they're not going to be good. But it, it sounds like all the reports and Taves has had some kind of, inf you know, some inflammatory quotes about, you know, the, the plan and the build and this and that. I think that they're more on board than people give them credit for really? or realize. That's that's hmm. from somebody that I very much trust in the organization. And do you think that's because of Luke Richardson or is it because of the guys or is it because of like a mix of multiple things? Just I think it's a mix, but I think Luke Richardson is a huge factor. I think he's a huge, I think he's a huge factor. So, um, you know, and that's, it's not going to be an easy or fun year, but I, I think it's almost similar to the Bears where it's like, you just want to see guys playing the right way. And I think Luke Richardson will get him playing the right way. You want to see Johnny not look terrible. I think he won't look terrible. Supposedly he's very motivated to kind of get some respect back. And I, again, like I, I think it's the the team the that they're – like if you look at the death chart, you're like, man, they got guys who do not belong. But I think there will be the, – I think the culture will be better. And then the, the plan would be to like let's have a culture. And then instead of Max Domi, we have – you know, in a couple of years, it's it's Nazar. So he's like plays similar but better. And, you know, they just try to build up like a style of play and a system and then have newer, younger guys slide into the roles that are being filled by guys who won't be here long term. But I, I am encouraged that there is at least a glimmer of hope that Kane could finish his career in Chicago. That's what it sounds like to me. So I think that's good. And if he, he I could see him getting traded too at the deadline, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. So this, I feel like it's he's trending like every day on Twitter with different rumors. All of them, all of them, all of them are bullshit. That's all good. of them. But I don't care about the season. So that's it. That's all I got. I like this. We're back to the, our roots at Redline Radio, where like we got the, we got like a scoop city. Yeah. It, even though it's not like a full, would you call it full scoop or? 
But um, this is like more behind the scenes reporting. I'd say it's a scoop. Yeah, I'd we say got a scoop. scoop here. Yeah, yeah. Put a scoop stamp on it. Yeah, you have a scoop stamp. Uh, this is Redline Radio. We're getting ready Bears season. Uh, thanks to all our Bears fans who showed up and are going to be optimistic this year, despite some uh, some notable deficiencies. I this think this year will be fun for the Bears. Seven and ten. Thanks to Big Cat for coming on. Thank you. Um, and uh, congratulations to Eddie on winning Surviving Barstool. This is the first time the oh, group has you. acknowledged it. Appreciate it, Dave. I said. I give you a shout out on Twitter. Thank you, Dave. A lot of people were like, "Man, I didn't know Ed was that oh, cunning." I don't know Ed. He's cunning. Mm. We got to win. Yeah, you got to. Oh, it's a we. You play to win the game. <laughs> Are you ready to give a full breakdown on a one through ten scale of John's pizza? Not yet. That's questionable. You've had the pizza. You know, nice moment. Thanks for the congratulations and White Sox Day was just at my throat again. About I'm not pizza. at your throat. I think that was very cordial. Did you can did you convert the prize to Tesla stock yet? No, not yet. I have to uh, determine what I want to do with it. Might get some solar panelings, you know. So we'll see. Energy efficient, Ed. We wouldn't expect anything else. Uh, that's it for Redline Radio. We'll see you guys next week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're almost at fifty thousand. Very close. Yeah, it's exciting crazy subscribe to 50,000 um do we get a plaque for that no no 100 yeah 100 yeah we get a plaque for, for 50 yeah oh yeah oh. okay good stuff all See gas you. no breaks tj play the shit